Poštovane... Dear ladies and gentlemen, apologies. We know that this initial moment when the amplifiers are turned on is always awkward. Welcome and a good morning. But to be quite honest, uh, we wish you a good morning. It's not yet uh, a good day. It's a typical uh, Monday before the Christmas. It's December and we woke up to a little bit of snow. But in addition to holidays, we as a people have a lot of things to celebrate uh, about. But before the psychological preparations for the tomorrow's day and the tomorrow game, I believe you will all agree we need to live in reality, go back to reality and discuss some serious topics and everything that is troubling the society at large. And if uh, we do in work enough on it, and we are, we can change even the current moment that we're in, but it can really prepare us for a better tomorrow. Therefore, good morning and a good welcome once again to the first annual conference of the Croatian National Recovery and Resilience Plan titled Ready for Tomorrow. A Allow me at the very beginning to extend my special greetings to our distinguished guests. First of all, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Croatia, Mr. Andrei Plenković. Good morning. Then Mr. Marko Pavic, envoy of the President of the Croatian Parliament and the President of the, uh, the Committee for Regional Development and EU Funds. Then Vice President for Demography and Democracy of the European Commission, Madam Dubravka Šuica. Minister of Finance in the Croatian government, Mr. Marko Primorac. Then uh, Minister of Tourism and Sports, uh, Madam Nikolina Brnjac. Minister of Health, Mr. Vili Beroš. And of course, all the other state officials who are either present here or are with us through video stream. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming and welcome once again. At the very beginning, I said how important it is to discuss certain uh, serious topics and be present in the moment uh, and be aware of the reality surrounding us. This is only the beginning, the first conference where we wish to raise awareness on uh, being uh, ready for tomorrow. As an introduction into the entire topic of today's conference, I have to go back into 2020, which I believe all of us together would like to erase from collective memory, at least the ugly part. We all know the pandemic that was caused by the coronavirus struck the world, including Europe and Croatia. But not only did it strike the world and uh, caused everything that happened afterwards, but rather what ensued, and it caused the greatest economic crisis since the Second World War. For the EU member states to get out of this situation as soon as possible and create foundations for even more resilient and sustainable societies and economies, the European Parliament and the European Commission with European leaders in February 2020-21 achieved an agreement on the establishment of a special recovery and resilience facility. The Croatian National Recovery and Resilience Plan was approved last year, and this year already Croatia has been disbursed significant funding from the European Commission. The resources from the Croatian RRP are the key driver of growth of domestic economy, the backbone of which is the private sector. Taking into account the main objectives of the facility in the preparation of the Croatian NRRP, the government paid special attention to the reforms and investments, especially those that pertain to green and digital transition and transformation, which represent the backbone of the plan. More on the European facility and the Croatian NRRP and how its implementation in going will be provided by the participants of today's conference. We are going to have two very important panels, but at the very beginning, uh, information on the implementation, facts and numbers will be shared by people addressing us at the very beginning. That's why I would kindly ask the Minister of Finance of the Republic of Croatia, Mr. Primorac, to address us. Good morning, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning to you all, dear Mr. Prime Minister, dear Vice President of the European Commission, representatives of the European Commission, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a particular honor and pleasure for me to be able to welcome you and say a few introductory remarks on the occasion of the 
Celebration of the first year of the use and implementation of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. Over the last few years, Croatian economy has been facing numerous challenges. From the COVID crisis, earthquakes, energy crisis, and the effects of increased energy prices and inflationary pressures, which have had a significant reflection on the Croatian economy, but also on the fiscal position of the Republic of Croatia. In the year 2020, primarily because of the consequences of the COVID pandemic, we suffered significant losses and significant slowdown of the economic growth. And of course, the measures adopted by the government in that context reflected on the condition of public finances and on our budget, our deficit and our public debt. In the year 2021, we recorded strong economic growth primarily because of the Croatian businessmen, Croatian entrepreneurs uh, who have demonstrated that they are resilient, agile, and that they are ready to adapt to the new circumstances. But also because of the measures adopted by the Croatian government, which has demonstrated that it does know how to cope with numerous challenges and that it is ready to react appropriately, which it has done uh, coping with all of these challenges that we had to face in the last several years. And primarily based on the principles of social market economy, principles of subsidiarity, solidarity, and equity. These successes, of course, had their foundation also in the implementation of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. And I have to highlight in particular that in the times ahead of us, and this year we are expecting an economic growth of 5.7%, inflation at 10.4%, Next year, we expect a slowdown of this economic growth to the level of 0.7% with an inflationary pressure of about 5.7%. And the reason for optimism and additional belief that we are going to go through this turbulent period successfully is based, among other things, on the utilization of the funding and implementation of all of the reform objectives and investments from the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. Croatia, when speaking of the NRRP, with the pre-financing in the amount of 812 million euro has successfully absorbed the first tranche of 700 million euro having fulfilled 34 indicators in other words reform measures and investments in addition to those three four indicators within the second tranche we have fulfilled another 25 indicators and submitted an application for an additional 700 million euro and we expect the disbursement through over several days in other words in mid-december and we are also very actively working on fulfilling the 45 indicators for the third trench. When speaking of indicators, I'm referring to reforms and investments. And those reforms and investments were not simple. Within the first tranche, we carried out the reform of the fiscal framework, which changed the act on the prevention of conflict of interest. Within the second tranche, we adopted uh, indicators or criteria for the actual and functional merging of self-government, local self-government units within the third tranche. We are implementing a series of reforms pertaining to pension insurance, health insurance, science and education. So there's a whole series of reform um, steps uh, which are going to contribute significantly to the preservation and further strengthening of the resilience of Croatian economy. The National Recovery and Resilience Plan is not important for the Republic of Croatia only in the context of the utilization of the funding which is at our disposal, but rather also in the context of reform processes and investments which are going to make our economy stronger and more resilient to crises. From the point of view of the Ministry of Finance, I can say that it is a great pleasure for me to highlight that the Ministry of Finance, which is in charge of the coordination of the implementation of the NRRP and in close cooperation with the cabinet of the Prime Minister, 
it has had a significant role in the implementation of these activities. And with regards to the organization of the process and the success and the fulfillment of all of the reform indicators, we have been commended, of course, by the European Commission as well. I would, uh, in conclusion, also like to highlight that uh, it is uh, another great pleasure for me and a matter of great hope uh, in view of the further utilization of this funding, which is going to contribute for these challenging activities, and especially the year ahead of us, when we expect the economic growth to significantly slow down, and we hope it will going, it is going to help us cope with all of the challenges ahead of us. I would like to thank on this occasion everyone who was involved in the preparation of the NRRP, especially those who were directly involved in these processes. I wish us all a great deal of success in the further utilization of these uh, resources and, of course, implementation of all of the reform activities. And since we are also nearing the Christmas time, I'm going to use this opportunity to wish all of you and your families to wish you a Merry Christmas and a lot of success in the year 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Pre Minister, uh, Mr. Minister, uh, for these words through which we heard some uh, facts, but which also show some optimism. So we really do wish you a lot of success in your further work, and thank you for your efforts so far. Now I'm going to kindly ask Madam Schuitzer, Vice President of the European Commission, to also address us and say a few words about the importance of these European grants and funding. Dear Prime Minister, dear ministers, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to be able to be with you here today and represent the European Commission, of course. I would like to share with you a few thoughts on the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. Today, we are celebrating everything that has been achieved in the previous year. Today, we are talking about the responsible democratic decision making. And this is a story of uh, courage and vision. One of the key moments in our story took place almost 10 years ago on July 1st, 2013. And EU membership did not just come on its own, as you well know, nor membership in the Schengen area an area with 420 million people without border control, nor in the Eurozone. And of course, the Pelješac Bridge did not happen by itself. All of these successes are a result of serious and committed work, a result of a vision and initiation of the fulfillment of potentials that Croatia has. In order to realize this vision completely, we had to accept the challenges and opportunities that progress brings about. That's why I am proud that today Today, on behalf of the European Commission, I can congratulate the Croatian government, Prime Minister Andrei Plenković, all Croatian institutions, but also all Croatian citizens on their successes and achievements. Croatia, as you know, was always a part of the European circle. And as of January 1st, with all of the privileges of our full membership in all integrations. Naturally, as we've heard from Minister Primorac, we are still facing numerous challenges. Currently, the geopolitical environment reminds us that crises, even war crises, are never far away. Russian invasion of Ukraine has resulted in strong pressure on all EU member states, and Croatia is no exception in that regard. Unfortunately, we in Croatia have ourselves survived uh, attacks, uh, bombings. Uh, we had to defend our homes, so we best understand our friends from the Ukraine. Fortunately, this history is behind us as the border controls are going to be very soon a matter of history. But now this provides us with experience and a unique perspective in terms of making decisions on the European Union. Uh, we are aware of the series of crises that we have been facing, COVID, energy crisis, Russian aggression, and the European Union responded with a strong instrument called the Next Generation EU. This fund, together with the next multi-annual budget of the European Union for the period from 2021 to 2027 will bring to the member states more than 1.8 billion euro. As you well know, within the next generation EU, we have also created the Recovery and Resilience Facility from which 572 billion euro will be disbursed in loans and grants. The RRF supports investments of the member states into structural reforms, which will help 
their economies make more resilient to future shocks and crises. And the implementation of the RRF is progressing as planned. So far, at the level of the whole EU, we have disbursed a total of 136 billion euro. The Commission has positively assessed the NRRPs of all 27 member states, and the Council has supported the positive assessment for 26. As you remember, in July last year, the Commission and Council approved the Croatian plan. It has been assessed as comprehensive, ambitious, and it covers numerous areas from economy, public administration, education, science, research, and healthcare. The implementation of the NRRP is going well in Croatia. Croatia has always received 1.5 excuse me, billion euro, and it's the third country in Europe in terms of the accelerity of the acceptance of requests for payment within the RRF. Spain and Italy are ahead of us. On uh, September 19, Croatia submitted the second application uh, for 700 million euro, and I am glad to be able to report that last Friday the Commission issued a positive decision on the disbursement, and the disbursement is expected this week on 16 December on Friday with another 700 million euro. With this disbursement, Croatia is going to absorb over 40 percent of the awarded or allocated grants. Those 40 percent is equal to the value of almost or more than four Pelješac bridges so far received already this year. Perhaps we don't feel that value as of yet, and that's how it is in the process of reforms and restructuring. It takes time to see the effect of all of those reforms, and the effect will be felt through the increase of the competitiveness of Croatian economy, a higher potential of Croatian growth, and with these investments, the Croatian economy becomes resilient to future crises. The funding should be used together with the cohesional, cohesion and structural funds. We need to make sure that the programs and projects financed from these funds are complemented and mutually supportive. In addition, the introduction of the euro will remove the exchange rate risks, reduce interest rates that the Croatian citizens pay on their loans. I have mentioned a series of effects of the RRF, although we are mostly talking about larger infrastructural projects, other areas have not been neglected either. We support dynamic business environment for SMEs, 500 million euro intended for targeted grants to SMEs, which are the backbone of the Croatian and uh, European economy. We support active labor market policies in green and digital transition with the emphasis on vulnerable groups and women, and especially priority for youth who are unemployed, not in education and not in training. These investments is, uh, are going to also uh, support the uh, education reform, and we are going to support the improvement of access to early and preschool education without neglecting and do so intergenerational solidarity, which is embedded into the foundations of next generation EU funds, because this money is going to be disbursed only in 2059. Why do I mention intergener intergenerational solidarity? Because the Commission is currently borrowing this money on the capital market and the money is going to be repaid only 2059 which means that this is the money of the next generation that's why we call this the best example of intergenerational solidarity that's why it's important to involve the youth as well because they are the ones who are going to live in this future but also older people in the decision making on focusing these funds you know that 2023 is the european year of skills that's why member states are going to invest additional efforts to train unemployed, to requalify workers and to acquire skills. The RRF uh, contributes to green and digital transition. We are talking about investments into the sectors of energy, transport, waste, uh, reconstruction of building to improve their energy efficiency. And given the situation in Zagreb, in Croatia, earthquake, significant uh, funding is going to be dedicated to the renovation of buildings following the earthquake. For instance, energy sector will receive 658 million, transport sector 728 million, 789 for construction sector. Uh, connectivity in rural area will be supported by 130 million euro. Grants from the RRF account for about 9% of the Croatian GDP, and this money will have to be spent no later than by August 2020. 
Croatia has established a firm structure for the implementation of the plan and secured a quality system of revision and control. All of this has done, been done before the submission of the first request for payment, and this provides for concrete mechanisms to prevent fraud, corruption, double financing, and conflict of interest. We have to continue to construct on these foundations together to build the road and the path to a more resilient future, strengthening of our economy, our society, and our democracy for all generations. I also have to reflect on my portfolio. Dear friends, all of these investments would have been in vain if we were not aware of the democratic changes that are ongoing. That's why politics of our policies from the European level help member states to create conditions for young families, higher standards, and to remain in their own regions. But we do not do this to hold the free movement of citizens, but rather to dynamize uh, sometimes neglected areas which are subject to immigration. That's why we have adopted the long-term vision for the development of rural areas in order to make them more attractive and prosperous. Of course, this includes a series of other measures, such as uh, care for the elderly, because we're obviously an aging continent, which is not necessarily bad. No, on the contrary, we can uh, thank our longevity to the advances in medicine, better living conditions, but we also have to uh, provide for long-term care, which is connected to attracting young people into those professions. We hope that this, be, this year of skills is going to help in doing so. And in conclusion, in the current geopolitical context, we preserve the resilience of our democracy from within. Strong and free democracy, which is more needed than ever. And that's why this year we have provided uh, for working on the package of legislation, which is going to help strengthening of democracy from within in order for us to be able to recognize negative foreign influences and hybrid threats. But this is something we have to do from the earliest age so that our children are in the future responsible citizens who know how to respect institutions and strengthen democracy, which cannot be taken for granted, which we are warned about by this unjustified aggression of Russia on Ukraine. And that's why with this conference, we wanted to involve citizens into the decision-making process on the European level. And uh, the contribution of Croatian citizens and institutions has been uh, great. That's why the program of the European Commission for 2023 is based on 80% 80% of the proposals and conclusions of the conference. This was a great demographic or democratic um, uh, step, which has not been seen in any world uh, democracies. Ladies and gentlemen, since we are living in these events, sometimes it's hard to evaluate our joint successes. But uh, with time, I'm convinced that we are going to be able to um, appreciate our achievements and the joint work of Croatia and European Commission, all for the benefit of people all over Croatia and the Union, making our societies ready to face future challenges. Thank you all who are doing this very important work, and especially like to congratulate once again the Croatian government. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Schulze. Thank you for these positive and optimistic messages. We're, of course, uh, also would like to con congratulate the government but and also wish a lot of success in the future work. And now I would like to ask the Prime Minister of the Republic of Croatia, Mr. Andrei Plenković, to take the floor and address the audience. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Eva, for this introduction. Um, a, a good morning to the Vice President of the European Commission, the whole team from the European Commission who have been following uh, our work in this uh, uh, recovery and resilience plan. I would like to uh, greet uh, the members of our parliament, uh, uh, Mr. Pavic and Ms. Bušić. Uh, they had to vote in the uh, European Parliament. I would like to greet uh, the ministers, Mr. Pavic, Ms., uh, Mr. Beros. Um, I would like to uh, congratulate Mr. Pavic's team on this organization uh, of, of, this, uh, of this conference, which is dedicated to the National Recovery and Resilience uh, Plan. After these introductory remarks by the minister and the vice president of the commission, I would like to say a few words about the context of the uh, entire uh, next generation EU instrument and what it is providing for this fourth decade of Croatian independence and freedom. 
Uh, I would like to say that uh, it has been created in a very critical uh, moment after the uh, Croatian president's EU presidency ended, and it was prepared during these months of crisis, which started in January 2020, uh, when uh, we had a global escalation of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, uh, without it, this, th we would not have this instrument. But this reaction to this unprecedented uh, crisis, we were here in this building, you remember, it was the end of October, beginning of November in 2019, we presented our priorities uh, uh, for, the, for our EU presidency. Uh, we had very intensive, uh, intense activities, and then we switched to video conferencing. Uh, this fact, in a way, has uh, brought the EU institutions, the member states, our economy, uh, the tra uh, transport, education, everything else. Not uh, it, it, it has it, uh, to a, a new uh, position, uh, uh, which hasn't been seen in the European continent for for a hundred years, and we were. Uh, we had to find creative solutions for the economic and financial uh, damages uh, caused by COVID-19. And I remember these neg negotiations very well during our presidency and at the beginning of the German presidency. In the meantime, we had a short break, uh, which was called parliamentary election on the 5th of um, July, and then we entered the uh, uh, currency mechanism and the bank uh, union, and when we talked about uh, formation of um, a government, and we went to Brussels and back uh, a, a number of times. But what was the most important in that moment? There was a strong will by the European leaders uh, to give a huge response to a common uh, problem. There has not never been such a huge problem or such a huge response. 750 billion euro uh, was the value of the package. Uh, uh, this is an unprecedented response, a mechanism that we men mentioned in 1959. Uh, out of the box thinking for, for uh, uh, and, and thinking about the uh, joint framework together and adding to that the national context of national recovery and resilience plans as an injection for a faster recovery of the European economy and our uh, uh, way of life as a whole to, to a, uh, a normal trajectory. And as uh, Madam Schuitze said, uh, this is a huge instrument and we need to talk about what it has enabled. So this decade, where uh, we are implementing the national um, development strategy adopted by the uh, Croatian parliament, uh, we have two mod modules. One is the multiannual financial framework, 7 plus 3, uh, 2021, 2027 plus 3 years, and the national recovery and resilience plan, which also has two parts. One is the 5.5 billion euros. Uh, which are fully, uh, uh, which are actually grants, and uh, we we should have had 6.3, but our friends reduced this to 5.5 because they said uh, we are recovering too fast and we don't need all this money. Uh, fortunately, we have these 3.6 billion in in loans, which are very favorable loans, which can be complement uh, complementary. So we have this rounded framework from the European funds, and we need to see how we can use these funds uh, because the uh, COVID crisis is intertwining with the Russian aggression on Ukraine, with the food crisis, inflationary pressures, and it enables us to further finance further investments in critical and primarily energy infrastructure, which will help Croatian citizens, the Croatian uh, a nation, but also considering our position, it makes us an important, a relevant regional energy hub. In this context, uh, we uh, uh, need to look at how we can use this these instruments in a smart way. 
uh, we wanted the 16th of December, which is the last day of the uh, work of the Croatian Parliament. We wanted this day to be the, 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 the day of disembursement of 700 million to round this uh, period up with a nice financial um, envelope which raises the funds to 2.2 billion uh, in total with uh, one uh, one uh, 1.8 uh, when 800 uh, million in the first range 700 in the second tranche and uh, I I you need to understand that we are really fast and efficient i think that only uh, spain and uh, italy which are the mediterranean mediterranean countries with more experience are ahead of us they are more efficient but uh, we are very close so out of all the uh, uh, european uh, countries there are some countries that uh, haven't been approved uh, uh, whose uh, nrps haven't been approved yet so in the summer of 2021, our plan was approved. And it's important to understand uh, uh, the dynamics of the Croatian activities. Why am I saying this? Because we have incredible opportunities for investments, which without the NRP, we would not have. Uh, for example, in the area of education, starting from preschool education, uh, investments in kindergartens, in primary schools, in uh, secondary education, in higher education, uh, which will happen in the upcoming years. These investments are unprecedented. We will remember uh, the instrument called uh, National Recovery and Resi Resilience Plan for a long time because it will enable such an educational structure uh, that uh, thanks to that, uh, we will also achieve the goal of a single shift uh, uh, schooling. And if we, rela we relate that to uh, free uh, transport, free meals in all primary schools, uh, this shows that there is a rounded policy which needs to necessarily needs to result uh, in, in uh, uh, positive outcomes. The role of the government is to say that uh, the times are such that only the uh, competitive societies which uh, go uh, in line with the green transformation, uh, the uh, um, industrial uh, uh, fourth industrial revolution, they can um, play at the changed playing field. What we could do 30 years ago is not enough anymore. It's not enough to be the best, the most efficient and fast. And the government says, all right, what are the best practices in other countries? They say that the countries which have free uh, school books, free meals, have the, uh, have the pupils who have the uh, who are best in their schools okay let us let us take these experiences and apply them and have uh, high quality generations of young people that you, whom you can plug in just like a mobile phone in any context and who will be able to function together with everyone else who is in the same global game uh, this is good for the global the globalization is good it doesn't mean that we will have less Croatians who will know less about our culture identity religion etc they will know all that but they will also know whatever they need to be competitive in global and european markets this is just a small example of what how what is important to us is complemented with such an instrument on top of that the moment that uh, we will have in less than 20 days and that is the transformation in terms of the Eurozone and the Schengen area, which coincides with all the efforts of um, uh, facing the crisis. And this is one of the most tangible transformational mom moments in the context of the uh, 10th anniversary of Croatia's membership in the EU. We still, I was looking at this at the uh, 
uh, with my colleagues, but uh, I, I think that there is no one who uh, joined the Schengen area and the Euro area on the same day. And this was one of the priorities uh, of our government in its first and second per term and supported uh, uh, with the National Re Recovery and Resilience Plan. Also, we were one, uh, a government that uh, made comprehensive interventions, uh, very voluminous in terms of funds, and uh, most of our set citizens, I believe, are not even aware of the crisis they live in because the, the global uh, topic is how to save energy, uh, both gas and electricity. Uh, very large countries are talking about uh, electricity reductions in order to spend uh, less. And we have ensured a very peaceful uh, autumn and winter for our citizens. We have helped the kindergarten schools, towns, uh, municipalities, uh, non uh, uh, hospitals, uh, so that they uh, are not burdened by the electricity costs during uh, the winter. And this was uh, a goal of our interventionist policy uh, at the time when only the government can uh, do so. Just as we saved 130,000 companies during the COVID pandemic, we paid salaries for 800,000 workers in the private uh, sector, which, is an um, which was an unprecedented move. All of these companies would have collapsed uh, at that moment. Uh, our People would not would lose their jobs. Our families uh, would not be able to support them. Same because we had this key uh, political logic of maintaining the social cohesion uh, in the society. Uh, when in times of crisis, you need to create measures uh, which uh, to to save people, and this was the essence of uh, our policy, and we have succeeded. And, and now, going through the new crisis with a lot of experience uh, in crisis management, we have additional uh, mechanisms at our disposal to be more protected and less exposed through the membership in the Eurozone and through the Schengen area. Everyone coming to Croatia will be able to come faster and easier. And all of our co uh, companies, you have heard the... Uh, 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 the uh, um, statements of the uh, uh, transport companies, uh, also the uh, Croatian tourism, as Madam Bernas said, uh, this year was at the same level of 2019. Our country has only uh, 4 million people, and we have uh, five times more tourists uh, uh, coming. Uh, none of the big countries, Italy, France, Spain, none of them have them. These are friendly countries, but we are com uh, competitors in terms of the uh, tourist market. But none of them have uh, uh, five, uh, five times uh, more tourists than uh, the population. And revenues, uh, which will uh, uh, surpass uh, the year 2019 uh, by far as the contribution to uh, our GDP, as Marco said, of 5.7%, uh, but I believe that uh, we will have a, a bigger growth of maybe 6%. In that context, by uh, GDP growth, uh, we will be among countries which ended uh, 2022 with very good results, with an investment uh, credit rating uh, uh, by all three agencies and with consolidated public finance. And we, when you look at this last week of, of the uh, Croatian parliament, it somehow sums up the entire year. Uh, today, we have two acts which are relevant for the uh, implementation of the Schengen acquis. Uh, they will be adopted on the 1st of January. Tomorrow, five acts from the Ministry of Finance. Some are related to the euro. Uh, one to this additional pro, uh, income tax, which is an expression of social solidarity in an unprecedented crisis, where those who have the most, who are the best, who are the most profitable, will give a part of their income um, uh, to those who are the most uh, vulnerable 
uh, uh, the poorest and who would otherwise have a very difficult time going through the car uh, crisis. And uh, today it's the Croatian Lipa. Tomorrow it will be the every cent of this tax, which will be redis redistributed to those who have the least. And the government is doing this because of the cohesion, not to punish uh, 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 businesses and uh, to fulfill the main um, principle of solidarity. On Wednesday, we will have two key acts from the Ministry of Health. So Schengen, the euro, uh, additional uh, profit tax, uh, health reform. And on Thursday, we will finish with the Agriculture Act, which forms the foundation to uh, absorb funds in, funds in the uh, agricultural stra strategy 2023 to 27 and Mr. Gersic is here the d uh, digital development uh, strategy until 2032 uh, so this is just one segment and then we will have amendments and voting and the 700 million sent by Dubrovka uh, just before Christmas why am I saying this? Because they have already said said uh, everything. I had to invent uh, a new speech uh, now. So I just want you to see how many parallel topics there are, and they are intertwined. And then another piece of data that we uh, always uh, we tend to say, uh, Minister Tramikash, Tramishak, we are in surplus uh, now, so we are a net beneficiary with 68 billion uh, when com uh, combining the multi-annual financial framework and the national recovery and resilience plan. So it is very important to understand that we are now in the 10th uh, year of our EU membership. We will continue to be a net beneficiary for seven or eight years. Uh, we will draw a, a line in 2030 and see how successful we have been and how th this was beneficial. But this epochal and transformational effect on the quality of life, on the citizens, the economy and our institutions, and an in international confidence that uh, is maybe the best demonstrated by our uh, football players who are not playing as coming from a very small country, but uh, uh, those who are among the four best uh, uh, teams in the world. So Croatia, which was not recognized, is now behaving as a country who is uh, implementing its efforts, starting from the home lake, uh, war, uh, defending its territories, building institutions, uh, and integrating financial, uh, implementing financial instruments. Croatia, which has uh, created a state uh, whose citizens are, are, are living uh, well. Uh, and this is what you are doing in your own segments. And it is important to understand how we are building Croatia together. And here we're building uh, a high quality, uh, better and more just and socially inclusive society in which everyone benefits. This is the essence of what we are doing. A better, uh, there is no better way of uh, boosting our position in the European Union. What the other uh, politicians are saying, what would be the alternative uh, uh, that Europe is horrible, um, this, th these are nonsenses. These, this is provincial nonsense. And if we were uh, uh, doing, if we were leading uh, the country in this way, we would be nowhere. We would be crushed by the food crisis, energy crisis. There would be nothing. And that's why it is important that we are aware that what we are doing, and this is the essence, what I'm talking about, about the modern sovereignty. I want to uh, draw them to our side. I want them to start thinking maturely how to uh, um, strengthen Croatia, those who are who are afraid of globalization and who are against Europe. Uh, they have these, uh, uh, their beliefs are founded in conspiration theor theories, but this is all normal. So we want to uh, and and we want to echo all this in the media uh, space. So such e events as this one should uh, receive a relevant uh, media space. Uh, 
because these things have a, uh, an important effect on the life of our citizens. And this is why I would like to wish you success at this conference. I would like to thank all the uh, uh, the whole team in my team and in the Ministry of, at the Ministry of Finance uh, and I can only say that it will not do significant harm. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister Plenkovic, for this fantastic speech, all the more so because it was invented at the last minute, but full of facts, optimism, and a positive stance for a better tomorrow because we are becoming ready for tomorrow. I do comment this primarily on behalf of our host today, the head of the representation office uh, of the EU in Croatia, Mr. Ogden Zlatev. Thank you so much to you and your team for your work so far and for organizing such an important conference. We've come to the part where I'm going to uh, announce the first break so that during that we can all take our seats comfortably for the first panel, which is on our agenda today. So once again, thank you all, distinguished guests, for coming, and thank you all who are with us through online stream. Please do not log off.
Poštovani. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I kindly ask you to take your seats again and sit comfortably so we could start with the panel in a few moments. Thank you very much. Which, whichever side, yeah, exactly. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming back to your seats. If you wish to change your seat and come closer, since some uh, people have left, we know that people have previously uh, arranged uh, business th things to do. So do not be afraid to take your seat closer because you will be closer then to the Q&A session after the first and second panel. So as I kindly ask the panelists of the first panel to join me here on stage, feel free to change your seats and move closer to the stage so that you can focus and hear and see our panelists better. So uh, what we have now is the first panel today, which we call measures to support competitiveness of the business sector. In other words, we are going to talk about why the NRRP is important for the Croatian economy and how the funding can specifically help. All of this we'll hear from people who are deeply in this topic uh, for a considerable number of years who have enough uh, knowledge and experience and also facts that they know, so they are going to be able to provide specific answers. And after each panel, for which we uh, suppose it's going to last for about 40, 45 minutes, we are going to leave some room for Q&A. One or two questions from the audience. So I will kindly ask you to applaud finally here at the National uh, library for our great panelists. We are happy that we have been joined by the deputy director of the DG for Economic and Financial Affairs. To take any seat, you're the first. Potom pridružiće nam se i da... Then we will be joined by Madam Natasha Mikush Zigman, State Secretary at the Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development. Good morning to you as well. Welcome will be joined by the representative of Croatian businessman, director of the company Sobochan DOO, Mr. Franjo Sobochan. Thank you also for being with us today. Next up is Mr. Tomislav Radoš, vice president of the Croatian Chamber of Economy. Good morning to you all and welcome. 
and Hrvoje Galicic, advisor to the board of the Croatian Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Good morning and welcome to you as well. We are going to skip the introduction on my side since the distinguished speakers in the welcome addresses have said quite a bit about the amounts that have already been dispersed, first tranche, second tranche, how much is about to come. Madam Shuica even went as far as to provide specific amounts depending on each line ministry. That's why we're immediately going to go to the questions. By the pandemic and the crisis uh, which followed, Croatia actually marked significant economic recovery in 2021. So what could be done for further increase of productivity of competitiveness of uh, Croatian companies and what is being undertaken uh, as a part of the plan, of the national plan. Thank you and good morning. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, let me state that uh, the competitiveness of the uh, Croatian economy is already uh, strong, it's already increased quite a lot in recent years. There is uh, the new uh, um, uh, export markets which have been achieved uh, and because um, the economy is uh, um, uh, the economy of the ex um, export companies is growing more than the international demand and also there are many new companies which are able to export in the last period. Um, it's very important, there was a talk, of course, before about the importance of uh, entering the euro to think uh, about how the economy will thrive during the euro. Uh, and uh, and uh, it is now, in fact, uh, more challenging uh, to preserve competitiveness. Uh, uh, and in particular, it's very important not to lose it uh, because it's uh, more difficult uh, than to uh, regain it in absence of instruments like the exchange rate and uh, 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 which is no longer available as an instrument, and also because monetary policy is conducted now in Frankfurt. Um, in, in addition, there is a further catch-up uh, to be done because the productivity levels of companies in Croatia is still half of the level of the EU. And this is particularly serious for, country, for companies which are very small, the so-called micro-enterprises with less than nine uh, employees. Uh, it's also important to diversify uh, the economy. Uh, tourism is of, is, of course, very, very important in Croatia, and rightly so. Uh, but it's also good to diversify the economy and therefore become competitive in other sectors uh, than just tourism. So what can be done to improve uh, competitiveness? There are, uh, I would like to highlight now uh, five areas in which there is also particular emphasis in the RRP uh, in terms of actions to uh, address it. So the first area is improving the conditions for, for business uh, and companies to grow. Uh, there, uh, probably Natasha will talk about that, we worked uh, a lot in the last year uh, about uh, taking measures so that uh, productivity can be improved, uh, uh, in particular size, uh, true size, uh, small size, small companies, they have a productivity uh, which is very low, as I said before, and uh, this gap vis-a-vis -vis the rest of Europe will decrease with firm size. So in this respect, it's important to uh, adopt uh, policies uh, which uh, uh, reduce the regulatory and administrative burden and uh, provide uh, uh, support for financing. And in this context, the RRF uh, uh, is producing um, uh, both a, a very wide plan for reducing administrative burden, but also there is a significant financing uh, which is provided to uh, small, uh, medium and, and large enterprises in the forms of grants and loans. Um, this, of course, covers a number of areas, in particular the, uh, the, uh, in, in many, in many uh, sectors, but in particular to support the green and, and digital transition. The second area where it's important also to act is uh, research and innovation. Uh, the capacity of companies needs to be improved. This requires infrastructures uh, for research and development which is in place, uh, but also, again, the capacity to fund, uh, um, uh, fund this investment, but also uh, policies which are focused at, at uh, public, uh, in public research and a strong link between the community uh, of research and the market. In this respect, the RRP is providing three uh, areas of support. Uh, first, uh, by focusing a, perform, uh, a performance-oriented uh, approach uh, for, 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 for the public uh, research, uh, and by giving uh, funding uh, for institutes which do uh, perform better. The second is by bolstering the role of the Creation Science Foundation as the center of the process of uh, uh, research uh, um, uh, design. And third, uh, by uh, focusing on people, on so researchers and students, um, 
by providing direct funding to trainees and exchanges with the business sectors and favoring mobility schemes. The third uh, area is about skills in the labor market and there as well it's important that workers are able to uh, um, uh, provide uh, um, their support uh, to businesses uh, but it, this means that they must have the skills um, that they can acquire them over time uh, and therefore the RRP as, uh, as areas of work uh, as uh, active labor market policies uh, that allow the acquisition of skills through also the means of vouchers that uh, 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 employees and, la and labor worker can uh, use uh, uh, in areas which are also identified through the mapping of priority in the labor market. Um, uh, there is also consolidation of vocational training uh, programs which is uh, very important to simplify and make it more efficient uh, provision of, uh, of such support. The fourth and fifth areas relate more to the public sector. Uh, the fourth is about the governance of, uh, of uh, public assets. Uh, Croatia is a very uh, um, large amount of assets which are managed by the public sector and in particular by st state-owned enterprises and the presence of the state is among the largest in the, in the EU. Uh, these companies, they also show a large productivity gap vis-a-vis -vis the rest of, uh, of, the, uh, of the economy and uh, this is much larger than in other countries. And so it's important there to develop uh, better governance practices for the companies which are strategic um, uh, by depoliticizing them and by using the standards which are set at uh, OECD level uh, for, for strategic companies. For the others, it's important to have a process of monetization so by, uh, remain, by uh, uh, monetizing the assets and the companies uh, so that also will bring benefits of public uh, finances. In the RAP, there is a commitment uh, which is related to this area, which is uh, to revise the list of state-owned enterprises which are considered strategic, strengthen the, link, the legal framework for the governance, and also to sell at least 110 state-owned enterprises and the divestment of 4,500 uh, uh, properties. Finally, um, the public sector plays an important role in wage uh, negotiations. And so, uh, uh, normally in a competitive economy, it is the private sector which should have uh, uh, the lead into, into the wage dynamics, in particular the sector which is exposed to trade. Um, and to avoid that the public sector influences uh, in, in a negative way uh, these dynamics, it's important that the state is smaller and more efficient and invest in a better organization. And this will help attract uh, um, the excellence needed in the public sector. Um, and in the, in the RRF, there is in fact an important commitment to the wage uh, setting system uh, uh, to be reformed in the public administration so that there is a more efficient uh, allocation of resources and also the capacity to reward the excellence. So to conclude, the answer uh, is that yes, the RRP is there and to support the companies in their effort to improve competitiveness. And uh, also I would like to stress that there are many other areas besides these five I mentioned here uh, that would do as support in this, in this direction. And for example, there's a lot of investment in uh, uh, efficient transport and communication networks which are essential for companies. So I can stop here. Thank you. Thank you so very much, and, and I can't help but notice both uh, respected panelists here on stage and a uh, respected member of the audience nodding their heads as you speak, which means that so many people are actually involved in this for the better tomorrow, for uh, us to be ready for tomorrow. So thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple of more questions for you, but for now, Gospodine Radosh, uh, sklopu plana uh, Mr. Radosh, within the NRRP, there's just a bit uh, over 10 billion kuna intended for the business sector, in other words, private investments that are supposed to help us get out of this inflation and accelerate the economic growth. Which sectors are most under threat? Well, first of all, we have to say when the NRRP was being drafted, the key or the main generator was the COVID crisis. The energy crisis ensued somewhat later. And when you look at the structure of the adopted NRRP, we have two things. One is the recovery. The other one is the resilience. Those who are most jeopardized are the ones that have special calls created for them. And when you look at the structure of the calls, then this is definitely the sector of tourism and the sector of creative and cultural industries or so-called service sectors. 
Of course, whoever you ask in Croatia will say that all sectors are equally jeopardized, which, of course, they are all jeopardized because that was the year when the GDP was, decli was decreased and everybody felt the negative effects. That's as far as recovery is concerned. As for resilience, we have created a set of calls which have mostly been launched or are about to be launched. And when we look at the structure of those, almost 50 percent of funding uh, is um, attended for green and digital transformation and innovation. So these are the calls that should uh, help um, businessmen to be more resilient to whatever is ahead of us, even the energy crisis, which is here. Of course, uh, those who have uh, prepared themselves, regardless of the calls and everything else, for this uh, energy and green transitions are now under less temptation to fall into difficult um, problems brought about by the increase in energy prices and so on. So when we look at the two aspects, recovery and resilience, these sectors were definitely most uh, jeopardized with regard to the consequences of the COVID crisis. That's why they received special calls pertaining specially for them. So the light at the end of the tunnel is even closer than we think. The tunnel is not so long. Well, the tunnel has been extended with the Russian aggression on Ukraine, which then also caused the, the interruption or disruption in certain supply chains. And of course, we witnessed an increase in energy prices. But again, this is also the subject of the uh, new multi-annual financial uh, program and so on. It's just the uh, key to implement it. And of course, the uh, joining of the Schengen and Eurozone is going to provide another impetus to Croatian companies. My assessment is that it will be easier for them to cope with the next year, which will be more challenging than 2022 was. But your assessment is based on knowledge and experience. So we really do count on it. Thank you so much. Mr. Galisic, uh, how is the Croatian Bank for Reconstruction and Development Harbor focused on supporting the private sector? What are some of the measures within the plan? And um, when speaking of private sector, how do we promote young and beginners entrepreneurship? In other words, how do you keep and retain the young people or entrepreneurs who are beginners and help them stay in Croatia? Well, before I answer the question, you will allow me to thank the colleagues from the European Commission and the colleagues from the Ministry of Economy and Ministry of Finance, because over the last year and a half, we have truly cooperated very intensively on the development of measures from the NRRP. It was a demanding process, but a very positive one at the end of the day. So really, truly, I'm grateful to all of you. As for Habor, the Croatian Bank of or Reconstruction and Development, we have been trying to support for a number of years the competitiveness of the Croatian economy. So within the NRRP, we recognize an opportunity to support uh, our businessmen in a new direction. Colleague Radoš has mentioned that the basic impetus and stimulus was the whole COVID crisis and the situation with it. But what we all need to be aware of in the part pertaining to recovery and strengthening of resilience is de facto a new direction that uh, is trying, that the European Commi Commission is communicating uh, for all of us. The direction of green and digital transition as certain benchmarks for future greater resilience and competitiveness. Habor had a specific role in that respect in the development of financial instruments. Uh, we are all very familiar with the fact that we can use funding from EU uh, in terms of grants, but also EU funds are also used to finance the so-called financial instruments. These are instruments which uh, eventually are reduced to um, or boil down to more favorable loans, guarantees and everything else that the economy needs to be able to invest and employ more and at the end of the day to be able to achieve better results. Within the NRRP, Habar was guided by several principles in the development of financial instruments. These are as follows. On one hand, we wanted to horizontally support as many beneficiaries as possible so that our financial instruments as colleague Gabriele mentioned, are also focused on micro and small enterprises, but also on large enterprises, large entities, because all of the systems from the micro, small and medium uh, have the need to transform their business operations to digital technologies, green technologies. Mr. Sobachan will also probably be able to corroborate this. Uh, but the need for new investment and new activities is really present on a horizontal uh, level. On the other hand, in the development of instruments, we try to support 
support not just a horizontally horizontal level for entrepreneurs, but also place special emphasis on the special target groups which find it hardest to obtain financing. Precisely, beginners, young entrepreneurs, uh, women entrepreneurs, investments in the IT industry. We're all aware that there's a whole a new generation of entrepreneurs being raised, especially in digital technology. Some of them have become quite uh, known on the global scene, but there's a large number of young entrepreneurs uh, developing in that regard. So with our financial instruments, with the support of all line ministries and the office of the prime minister, we try to develop a structure of a product to which is support, going to support um, entrepreneurs in the uh, less developed uh, areas, but also those that are fast growing as well as young and beginners uh, entrepreneurs. We have developed six financial instruments boiling down to more favorable loans, which um, in the conditions of growing interest rates should remain very attractive and stimulate new investments, but also development of new guarantee schemes and also equity market in the Republic of Croatia as a source of financing for new generations of entrepreneurs who are yet to grow in the domestic market and do not seek sources of financing in traditional banking products, but rather through some new instruments. So we really tried to create a set of different measures in that respect. And at the end of the day, successfully negotiated with the European Commission the overall volume of those measures of some uh, almost 2 billion kuna, which eventually, in a sense of new investments, should have a multiplier effect, which should result uh, in two, three, or four times more investments compared to the provided funds. So transition and transformation in every sense, absolutely. So we are going to keep uh, young people here, uh, vulnerable groups, women entrepreneurs. Well, Habor as a development bank has been uh, implementing instruments to stimulate uh, young entrepreneurs for a number of years. And with the help of NRRP, we just obtained additional funding that we can use to um, achieve those objectives even more strongly and provide for young entrepreneurs even more favorable financing conditions. And owing to digital transition and transformation, I'm sure there's going to be much less red tape and bureaucracy to make it all easier. Thank you very much for these responses. This really is good to hear. You've also mentioned grants uh, and the number that really rang a bell uh, because ongoing is the call for grants within this NRRP in the amount of 1.9 billion kuna. Madam Mikush Zygman, how many calls has the Ministry of Economy published to date? What is the quality of the received applications, which is very important also because it was mentioned often in the public before that people even either didn't knew a launch was uh, launched or the applications were a suspicious quality. So let's be honest about how quality is important. Thank you very much for this question. As far as the calls, uh, and their number is concerned. Uh, the ministry is primarily working on grants and is launching uh, programs of grants for the economy. And within the recovery and resilient uh, mechanism facility, we are uh, or uh, we are focused on gr the green transition of businesses. We are aware that out of their own profits, and especially if in these uh, present circumstances after the COVID and the uh, energy crisis which affect which have affected the uh, um, their business uh, additional funds are needed f to achieve the green objectives that we have all obliged ourselves to we know about this uh, goal of reducing the impact of uh, emissions in the environment reduction of use of uh, uh, um, fossil fuels uh, these are the elements that are built into the call that you mentioned in order to to help our businesses to uh, go through the transition as easily as possible. Apart from the green transition, our priorities are also uh, innovations and um, research and innovations. Why that? Because uh, commercial banks uh, have a very modest way of uh, following our businesses because these are high-risk projects and we need to ensure grants in order to 
uh, enable uh, enough capital for businesses to be able to implement uh, research and innovation activities and implement new products and services for the market. And we know that the new products and new services uh, make uh, companies competitive. This is what attracts consumers, and this is how they can enter the global and national markets easier. I'm sure that Mr. Sobachan will tell us more on that. And the third segment is digitalization. We strongly support digitalization. Within these three priorities, we have launched four uh, calls for grants. Uh, I just talked to a colleague from the Hamak Bikra Agency, which is in charge of assessing the project proposals, uh, after which the ministry makes decisions on the finances and prepares contracts with the beneficiaries. And he said that uh, we have uh, now assessed 823 applications. Uh, we are working very hard on the implementation of these programs. We still have one. Uh, call for vouchers for the digitalization and uh, cybersecurity ahead of us. And out of 2.86 billion kuna uh, available through the, the uh, mechanism, uh, with the exception of these 75 million kuna um, for, uh, which are, uh, we, we, we will be awaiting in the next in the first uh, quarter of the next year. You asked about the quality of the proposals. Uh, the quality should not be questioned at all. In the public, there is an impression that uh, there are calls uh, where it is a, just sufficient to apply and it will automatically be uh, financed, which is not true. All projects, regardless of the manner of, uh, of the, uh, the call, uh, and the uh, the order of receiving applications or whether there are fixed uh, deadlines, all projects must uh, have a sufficient quality to be financed. For each pro uh, project, we check uh, the value uh, for money. Um, and the capacities of the beneficiaries in terms of their resources and financial capacity, whether the project is sustainable, whether um, the applicant has the resources to make uh, the project results sustainable. And these are the elements that um, uh, are taken into consideration in, in the in evaluation. So we cannot uh, uh, even, uh, we can never say that we are financing projects which don't have enough quality. Uh, a question for Mr. Sobochan. You were a very, su very successful entrepreneur. You literally started from your garage over 30 years ago. Uh, before that, you had other uh, uh, ventures. You were familiar with the digital, with this green transition, uh, digital transformation. You are uh, generating 60% of your uh, revenues from exports. Uh, from that perspective of a successful entrepreneur, uh, how, uh, uh, how is the plan uh, um, useful for the um, entrepreneurs in Croatia and to what extent? Uh, the recovery and resilience plan is very uh, useful, both to the public and private sectors, because Croatia will use the available funds to launch the necessary reforms, stabilize and strengthen its institutions and speed up uh, its economic growth. And uh, speaking from uh, my entrepreneurial angle, uh, it will boost uh, the entire economy, not just the private sector, and it will provide an opportunity to realize our plans and investment projects faster and strengthen our competitiveness uh, in the European markets, which today are uh, much more available uh, than ever, ever before. And if you're asking me how the entrepreneurs are looking at that, we believe that there is room for improvement. Uh, especially uh, in terms of availability of funds for the private sector. 
uh, which would uh, promote innovation uh, to an even greater extent, and the entire Croatian economy would be become more imp competitive. Thank you very much. Mr. Radosh, uh, what else can be done to additionally help the private sector, and what are the results and impacts of, these, of this financing uh, uh, and the financial injections for the SMEs in Croatia in numbers? I will start from your second question. We still cannot talk about the impacts and results. Uh, we can only uh, talk about them indirectly because we have seen the, a growth of uh, industrial production, capital assets, employment. So all the key macroeconomic uh, indicators are good and they're uh, rising. But the impact on the development of the economy and the businesses um, to be able to assess that, we need to define the criteria. Uh, Okay, we talked about the calls that have been launched uh, from the uh, uh, NRRP and by this ministry. There are other ministries that need to launch calls. Uh, after that, we need to assess the number of uh, signed contracts and how many funds have actually been used because they're not always the same. And the actual effects will uh, only be seen after 2026 uh, in terms of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. It would not be logical to say that uh, we have put all these billions into the economy and we have no uh, results. Uh, and we have to emphasize that we're talking about investments. The commission and the state are investing in businesses to make them more resilient. What else can be done uh, uh, for the calls? And there are many of them. Uh, last year, uh, last week, we had an IT conference with the state secretary here. Uh, and these businesses uh, find it very abstract. And by default, they hire a consultant. They, they don't even want to talk about it. What do the entrepreneurs in general say? They would like to know and, and be able to have a, a predictability, to know uh, when the calls will be published, what will be the criteria so that they can plan uh, their operations and their even their investments. And more generally, uh, a more general remark uh, is about the complexity uh, about the application form uh, through the electronic systems uh, through which you apply for a certain project. It is considered that it could be uh, somewhat simpler. So there is a, a, a always a conflict between uh, those who need the data to be able to assess the project. Uh, well, now we, we don't uh, have any more the uh, the principle of the fastest uh, of the so-called fastest finger, uh, but also uh, the entrepreneurs want it to happen as soon as possible. So we need to have an optimum of uh, information that need to be uh, provided. So maybe not for every call we need the same number of, of data uh, to be provided. So maybe an improvement of the application form, and that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Mikush Zygman, a question for you. Uh, it was mentioned here that uh, tourism shows pre-pandemic values, but Mr. Turudic says that we should not be focusing on uh, tourism, uh, both in the, me in the facility and the plan. One of the objective is to um, return the uh, uh, production and exports to pre-pandemic values. Um, how are we doing in terms of exports currently? And how can the plan help uh, improve these numbers? Uh, allow me, before I answer your question about exports, let me go back to the impacts of the EU funds on businesses. And as Tomislav said, it is impossible at this moment to assess the effect of the uh, NPRRs, but we can talk about assessing the effects of the funds from the previous financial perspective and the evaluation that we carried out uh, in terms of businesses reacting to EU funding, uh, which show that in all uh, companies that used uh, uh, EU funds, there was an increase in the number of employees. 
uh, an increase in revenues compared to those same or similar uh, companies on the market which have not received EU funds and what is the most important increase in productivity per employee. So there are results and, and we expect the similar results in terms of uh, NPRRs and RRPs, I'm sorry. Uh, for Croatia, the results are very good. For, uh, data for 2021 is an, uh, talks about an increase in exports for, uh, uh, by 29% compared to 2020, but we also had an increase in imports uh in terms of disruption of supply and chains uh but we also have but we still have a uh, balanced deficit um but uh, we need to be focused on the businesses because uh on expert uh, companies which uh, contribute to the uh, um, em employment the most uh, and because uh, two thirds of all revenues uh, come from companies exporting to uh, uh, other markets and our task as the ministry and the government as a whole is to create a favorable framework for such exporting companies. What can we do through the NRRP is what we are actually doing to disburden the companies uh, uh, as much as possible and create a more favorable uh, business environment through administrative disburdening, Paris fiscal uh, disburdening, uh, to uh, uh, reduce the need to uh, go through the uh, institute, to walk around the institutions too much, and also the uh, investments that we are talking about, investments in uh, innovations, digitalization, which increase the competitiveness of our uh, economy and make our companies more competitive uh, on the external markets. Uh, talking about experts, we need to uh, involve in this uh, discussion Mr. Sobachan, uh, over 60, with over 65 percent of revenue generated uh, abroad. Uh, have you applied for grants from the NRRPs and what was your longest investment cycle? Uh, you have experience in all that, particularly uh, uh, in terms of the energy um, crisis and the increase in uh, the price of raw materials. I would like to start elsewhere. You, you asked me how are we coping with the crisis. Yes, over the past two years, we have felt um, the crisis triggered by COVID-19, and it has disrupted our plans uh, considerably um, and, uh, because we produce equi equipment for um, uh, business facilities, but also for hotels in that segment. Uh, there were no investments, uh, none whatsoever. Also, we know that the uh, um, all the commercial centers in Germany uh, and elsewhere were mostly closed in 20 and 21. Uh, and this is where we lacked revenues from our key buyers. Uh, so we had to look for new uh, customers uh, to make up for uh, the decline in profits over over those two years, uh, which has paid off uh, now in this year, where we have our pre-crisis investors back, and we will have an increase of 65% uh, in revenues compared to 2021. But during the uh, crisis, we never gave up uh, on our strategy. Uh, we went through a strong digital transformation uh, also, a transformation of a, uh, an improvement of our organizational stru uh, structure, owing to our architects and designers, we placed on the market a new uh, brand, our own brand, a collection of uh, mobile uh, office furniture, uh, which is recording good results on uh, export markets. We have have many awards for uh, design and innovations on the German and Italian markets. As far as the energy crisis is concerned, it has not hit us that hard as uh, most other producers because uh, uh, we started our green and energy transition in 2016 when we invested in a uh, in a waste incineration facility, 
uh, for wood and also invested in uh, a uh, energy station, one megawatt energy station in uh, uh, 2012 and also connected to it our own solar uh, plant, uh, 200 gigawatt solar plant this year. And with the heating, heat and electricity that we are producing, we are covering most of our up to 70 percent of our needs for energy. Uh, I would like to use this opportunity to say that uh, the uh, Sobochin company, which I'm running together with my sons, Dan and Nicola, is a, so, uh, is a socially responsible uh, company. And at this moment, in addition to considerable funds invested in green um, energy, we are uh, carrying out a national uh, company uh, in which we are investing a lot of our marketing uh, budget in at the national level, which through uh, different communication channels and mega posters, uh, we try to educate the community about the, uh, the, the about the uh, necessary re relationship with sustain sustainability and nature. We will be. Um, we will be donating 8,500 uh, oak trees uh, and in cooperation with the Croatian uh, forestry, we will plant them in the uh, Međimurje County and uh, together with their experts, uh, we will include um, pupils from elementary schools and kindergarten children and on the uh, day of the planet Earth in April next year, we will have the final day of this campaign. And so in this way, we will be able to build hundreds of homes for birds. And at the same time, we know that each tree uh, uses a lot of the uh, carbon uh, dioxide and uh, this will largely contribute to uh, slowing of the climate changes. Uh, it is not enough to say that we are thrilled with what you are uh, doing. I'm sure that you're not the only entrepreneur with such results. So I would like to have a spontaneous applause for all of su all such entrepreneurs in Croatia. You have said yourself that your green transition started uh, several years ago and your digital transition as well. I am sure that EU funding has helped you do that. Yes, what I didn't say is that uh, we are using the funds from the uh, NRRPs for a project uh, of our solar uh, uh, energy plant. Uh, we, uh, partly we used uh, grants, uh, 2.2 million uh, kuna of grants, and currently we are investing in two projects. Uh, one of communication innovations uh, uh, co-financed from the NRRP and another uh, large investment project, uh, very large for us, 45 million worth. Uh, where we are building a new uh, uh, business facility and building uh, uh, roofs for the next solar electric uh, plant. Uh, most of the investment pertains to technologies for the processing of metal and wood. And this project is partly financed from our own funds and 85% uh, from the harbors uh, uh, loan. And uh, where and we use and here we use uh, interest subsidies from the NRRP. You can be a consultant for other companies as well. Uh, yes, yes, we used uh, the European funds before as well, and our company started, as you said, in 2000 from scratch uh, in 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 our family yard with five employees. And over that period, we kept investing and investing. We never stopped investing. And today, uh, we are operating on 12,000 square meters of uh, pr production halls with uh, 210 employees. We, we are 40 kilometers away from Austria. Uh, 
I must also say that uh, we are in Mursko Središće, the town of Mursko Središće. This is the northernmost town uh, in Croatia. Uh, we will not have the Schengen border starting from the 1st of January, which will uh, facilitate a lot of things for us as well. Thank you very much for your contributions to this conference. We just have a few more minutes left for this panel. Wise people say that challenges uh, re bring about uh, good solutions. So I guess that this uh, pandemic, in addition to bringing about challenges, also brought about certain opportunities. What opportunities do you see from the point of view of Harbor in view also of the energy crisis, but then ensued because of the socioeconomic circumstances, not to name them specifically now. So what opportunities do you see on the market. I think that uh, Mr. Sobochan really very well described all of the opportunities in the market, so it's difficult to add anything new. But what we have to observe is the entire NRRP and the entire RRF on the EU level takes actually two directions. On one hand, and it makes it possible for us to use grants, favorable financial instruments, and that's indisputable. This is a direct uh, impact. But it also, it shows us opportunities because just as Prime Minister mentioned in his speech, we are talking about 700 150 billion euro of investments on the EU level. So within those uh, investments, we should definitely also see Croatian entrepreneurs, not just in uh, using and uh, utilizing the funds, but also in uh, providing and implementing activities, uh, equipping new hotels, uh, new uh, production facilities, and so on. So it's a rounded cycle. We can also add that uh, Harbor's NRRP instruments were developed in response to the COVID crisis, but in the current crisis, I believe that there is going to be even more positive effects of the same measures. Unfortunately, the Minister of Finance has mentioned inflationary pressures, inflation, which unfortunately result in growing or increasing uh, interest rates. And through our NRRP instruments, we in a way respond to those questions as well. So the interest rates may increase, but for those entrepreneurs who adjust their projects to fit into the NRRP to make them sustainable, green and digital, Harbor has through NRRP NRRP provided for subsidies to interest rates from 50 to 75 percent of the amount of the interest rate. So those clients or those entrepreneurs, as Mr. Sabochon has said, who will uh, invest into green technology, solar panels, renewables, uh, um, significant part of the increase in the interest rate uh, cost will be, be compensated for through the NRRP. Of course, uh, the current times also have some risks. Harbor has managed to develop through NRP certain new guarantee schemes, even for large companies, for large entrepreneurs, because even large companies in Croatia, as a rule, are companies of 250 to 3,000 uh, employees. So they are actually mid cap uh, companies, not the large international companies. And in this occasion, they are going to be able to use both subsidies for interest rates, but also guarantees in order to be able to implement their projects and in the long term secure their position, just as Mr. Sobochan, I hope. I think we all hope for that. Thank you very much, Mr. Radosh. We are nearing the end. You, as the representative of Croatian businessmen here at this panel, what do you say? Do they see only challenges or do they also see opportunities that Mr. Galicic has just mentioned? Do we have any specific numbers which pertain to the entrepreneurs applying for grants. Well, definitely entrepreneurs do see opportunities. And uh, again, I have to emphasize the communication, what uh, uh, NRRP means and all of the calls within it. And even more importantly, this new multi-annual financial framework. And this communication in advance is really important for them to be able to adapt their investments to what is ahead. Um, specific numbers as to how much a certain company or somebody has uh, utilized, we don't have that, uh, I think. These numbers uh, would uh, uh, be uh, known to those who launch those calls. But uh, what the State Secretary said, I'm sure that anyone who uses certain EU funding has positive effects on their uh, business operations, increase in salaries, increase in productivity, and so on. What we are advocating for is that the competitiveness uh, enables them to become more resilient and more competitive on the global markets. 
And the starting point for all of that is information, 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 and education, education, education. Fortunately, the topic of our second panel is precisely that. So to conclude this first one. Uh, you opened the floor for the first panel, so I will kindly ask you to close it. In your opinion, and uh, what is actually the, the official state of the commission, what measurements should be implemented into business? Uh, sector in order to help it, especially now when the war and energy prices are in focus? Yeah, first of all, if I can just come back to one point uh, Vori was making, uh, uh, there are opportunities, and the opportunities are not only in Croatia. It's 750 billion, and there are the same procedures across Europe, so any company is able to have operate abroad should look in that also in the other plans, and uh, uh, perhaps there's a need for communication there as well, but uh, you can be proactive and look uh, at those opportunities as well. There's a lot of funding to, to, uh, to operate in other countries as well, based in, in Croatia. Uh, the other point about the measures for the crisis now, um, uh, indeed the crisis is having a, quite a, a negative impact and the economy is slowing down, but as Prime Minister Plenkovic said, uh, governments are taking very important set of measures. Uh, Croatia uh, is uh, among those, and in fact we just uh, adopted an opinion on the draft budgetary plan for 23 of, of Croatia, and we assessed uh, these measures, which uh, will be uh, of the order of 1.1% of GDP for 2023. Um, uh, now, going forward, what uh, from Europe is, uh, uh, is important is that these measures, uh, if continued, they are uh, made more efficient, uh, there is more cooperation, and also that they are fiscally affordable, uh, because there is a fiscal uh, consolidation which has to be uh, resumed uh, rather soon. Uh, and therefore, the Commission with the, with the Eurogroup will monitor the, the policies of the Member States uh, in, in the coming years uh, to make sure that they are targeted and focused uh, on people uh, which are uh, vulnerable, uh, but also on companies which are vulnerable. So it's very important to shift uh, uh, the policies in this direction in order to maximize the impact. It's also important that the policies do not um, uh, affect the price signal uh, which uh, is uh, provided by energy prices. Uh, because it is essential as well to be able to uh, reduce the dependency on oil and, and gas and to decarbonize the economy and therefore the uh, heavy measures, if continued, which do not uh, uh, obfuscate this, uh, this price signal is, is very important. It's also important to diminish and, uh, and uh, 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 stop this support whenever the uh, inflation pressure uh, 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 arises. Now, very importantly, besides uh, uh, the shorter measures, I to come back to the fact that the most important answer to this crisis is the implementation of the RRP, uh, because it provides a really an anchor for policies uh, uh, going forward, both in terms of reforms and investment. And in this context, uh, what the discussions which we're about to start with the government in terms of designing the actions which entered within the strategy of Repower EU will be very important because they will help to accelerate the transition and therefore reduce also the pressures uh, in the market. So we look forward uh, to progress in the direction thank you a lot of work so good luck in all of your future endeavors and uh, grazie uh, once again once again thank you kindly to all of our panelists but since i promised and uh, promises should be kept it's time for q a from the audience and perhaps any responses from the stage if you have any questions please raise your hand so we can see you and pass you the microphone you are hesitant, as in an auction, goes one, going once, going twice, going thrice, and nothing. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. I guess that, as was said in the uh, welcome addresses, everyone who is here is actually quite interested in and involved in this uh, topic. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you all for what you're doing, and well, I wish you a lot of success in your further work. We are going to applaud and thank our panelists.
we are all heavy at work, but I don't think you're afraid of it. So once again, thank you all for what you're doing. And as for uh, representatives of the media, I just kindly ask you to report on this to see as many entrepreneurs as Mr. Sobochan who are building their path uh, towards success and spreading the word of our beautiful country, just like our football players. 20-minute coffee break is what comes next, perhaps a few minutes less to try to stick within our agenda because we have to finish by 12.30 and then we have the next panel also to look forward to. So thank you very much and see you back at 11.45.
Dear ladies and gentlemen, so once again, good morning to all of you. I hope you've managed to have a cup of coffee and socialize with your colleagues, acquaintances and friends and exchange your impressions both in terms of the introductory and welcome addresses and everything we've heard during the first panel. Now up is the second panel at the first ever conference of this type, which really does bring hope for a better tomorrow and actually support it uh, by the name of the conference itself, which is ready for tomorrow. And we will be ready if we have in mind the generations that are yet to come, young people who are young nowadays, who we are going to leave our world on, to use this phrase, which really is founded in facts and in the reality. And precisely for that reason, the second panel is called Policies for the Next Generation. During the welcome addresses, we've heard some figures and some facts which never lie. So just to reiterate that over, that through, uh, with over, um, uh, 1 billion euro, the plan is going to support investment into education on all levels and also digitalization and transition of Croatia to circular economy and green technologies. That is precisely the topic of our second panel. So we are going to welcome with an applause our panelists, Eric von Breska, who is the director of the Re Re Recovery and Resilience Task Force within the European Commission. Hello and welcome to the stage. Then Stipe Mamic, State Secretary at the Ministry of Science and Education. Welcome. Take your seat, please. Then Tomislav Matic, Dean of the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Information Technology at the University Josip Jure Strosmer in Osijek. Welcome, Mr. Dean. And Kreshmir Ačkar, who is the Mayor of Velika Gorica and the Member of the Parliament. Once again, dobrodošli, gospodo, hvala vam. Welcome, gentlemen, once again. Thank you for taking out the time and for your will to talk to all of us and those of us who are still with us online. Thank you for your wish to share your experiences on the context of the NRRP, but also of the education and future of uh, next generations. And is the main part of the Next Generation EU program. The name itself, uh, self actually says a lot and we can see the logo up there on the big screen. But could you please explain how would the measures for next generations, for kids, for young people and for education in general, could contribute to a recovery of Europe? Okay, good morning, first of all. I'm very, very happy to be here with you. Um, in his introductory remarks, in fact, Prime Minister Plenković uh, emphasized uh, the importance of the reform of the education system of Croatia in the Croatian recovery plan. And he obviously is able to explain this much better than I can ever do. And this obviously leaves me only with very few uh, things to say. Um, so the first thing which I want to say, and this is, I think, crucial to always remember, is that education is the key to future success. More education means more and better paid jobs. It means equal opportunities. It means empowerment of women. It means less poverty. So it's, it's really important to get this right. And when we uh, discussed with the Croatian colleagues um, uh, back in the old days um, uh, what needs to be done, um, uh, I think the good thing was that we both agree um, that this is not the right thing or the right time for quick fixes. Because what we discovered was um, that the whole educational cycle needs to be reformed. And this starts with childhood education, uh, because when you look at it, uh, more than 20% of young children uh, have no kindergarten place in Croatia, so they don't go to the kindergarten before to, they go to school. The Prime Minister himself mentioned uh, that many pupils still go to school in shifts, which basically means that the teaching time is much lower than what you find in other countries in the EU. And this you then see when you look, for example, at the results of PISA studies, that uh, Croatia doesn't score as well as you would hope Croatia would. And then when you go to university, so uh, university graduates, what you see there is uh, that um, the, the share of, 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 of students who are in particular um, uh, uh, very knowledgeable in the area of ICT is rather low. And so what Croatian companies, in fact, report is that they have difficulties to, 
to, to find students with appropriate digital skills uh, to help um, uh, their company to thrive. So when we looked at this, we said, okay, well then the plan needs to address both on the investment side as well as on the reform side, all of these areas, not only one, but really from childcare to university, we need to put everything on the table. And, uh, and, and, and basically, and I will not uh, go too much into detail, just give you a few examples. Um, when we think about childcare, um, there's going to be a reform. Um, it's, it's about the revision of the Child Care Act, which on the one hand uh, puts, um, I mean, re revises and reforms uh, the funding uh, uh, scheme for kindergarten to make it more affordable for young uh, uh, parents to send their, 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 their kids to, um, to the kindergarten. But also what we are going to do, and this is complements this reform, is to invest in new kindergarten places. So by the end of the uh, plan, which means in 2026, we are supposed, or the Croatian uh, uh, colleagues are supposed to create 22,500 new kindergarten places so that all children have the possibility to go to a kindergarten. And as I said, similar uh, reforms and investment we also have for primary and secondary uh, uh, schools, uh, which is also crucial uh, to improve, again, the outcome of, 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 of the teaching system. And last but not least, I mean, what we also need to, to, to ensure is that all the bright young stars, uh, and there are certainly many of them in Croatia, that they don't leave the country. And, and so basically what we're also aiming is, is to improve the university system of Croatia. And this means both to support, um, uh, for example, researchers, but also students uh, by giving them scholarships, by giving them grants or so, but also to improve the equipment so that they have state-of-the-art um, uh, research equipment to, on the one hand, as I said, attract other researchers from abroad to come to Croatia, but also, you know, like to keep the best, uh, the brightest minds within Croatia. And so this is basically how we have designed the recovery plan uh, to, to basically, as I said, address the whole education cycle. Now, this will obviously take some time. I mean, this is not something which happens from today to tomorrow, but so far we are quite happy because we see that things are, are being done on the ground and, 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 and so we are still very, very confident that we are going to reach um, our objectives. And I stop here. Thank you. So as far as I can conclude, actually, is that you're very happy with the Croatian plan, right? So in what way does the plan solve structural challenges in a way that educational system of the future will meet the demands of the labor market itself? Um, I mean, uh, again, I mean, there are a number of, of things which we have done, but for example, one uh, issue is uh, we have carried out, or not we, I mean, together with the Croatian authorities, an assessment. What are the skills which are missing? and what needs to be done. For example, one thing uh, which is very clear, there are not sufficient teachers teaching mathematics, and, uh, and there are around 300 uh, roughly estimated. So clearly what needs to be done is we need to also improve the teaching profession, make it more attractive to at attract uh, uh, inter uh, how do you say, uh, committed teachers uh, in these areas. And then, as I said, um, based on this, um, we need to obviously also ensure that what, I mean, the, the, the students which come out of the system, indeed, um, uh, um, uh, that, that, let's say, the, 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 the areas which are, are, are needed by, by, by the uh, Croatian com economy, that, um, that these uh, skills gaps um, are addressed. And so, so, as I said, it's always a mix of reforms because you need to improve, um, uh, um, for example, as I said, um, to ensure to have qualified teachers, um, to improve, for example, also their salaries, that makes them interesting, as well as investments. You need to also ensure that, you know, like the school places are available and so on. So I think it's a mix of both. Exactly, and it will definitely involve the change of the curriculum itself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and now we'll use the funnel method. Mr. Mamic, we've just heard the views of the European Commission. From your point of view, how does the plan tackle challenges in education? What the colleague from the Commission has structured as well. When we started programming, we started precisely with the system of early preschool education. And the question was the following, as uh, it was usually, it used to be usually followed or financed on the local level, to what extent can the central government help? 
And we concluded that the first and greatest issue is the capacities. We need to increase the capacities. And this is where the main investments are focused in the construction or creation of new 22,500 uh, 22, uh, places in the kindergartens. The second thing is that we've noticed that there are small uh, local uh, self-government units which in the long run are not able to provide sustainability. And therefore, in cooperation with the colleagues from the Ministry of Finance, for which we are grateful, we uh, planned for a new financing model which would provide sustainability to small municipalities and towns which have modest fiscal capacities. And we have uh, budgeted funding for 2023 for this. We are about to finalize this by the end of the first quarter of next year, and its implementation is uh, starting from the next pedagogical year, in other words, from September next year. The third challenge that we're facing with is the analysis of our human resource uh, potentials. In a very short time, we will build uh, a great number of kindergartens, but on the market, we have a de deficit of uh, human resources. So we have envisaged a number of activities and measures to ensure for a sufficient number of personnel uh, over that period. And we also take into account the fact that there are families in Croatia for whom this very modest price, which is modest compared to uh, um, uh, Great Britain, for example, Germany, other countries, which is close to 1,000 euros in Croatia, it is about 500 uh, kuna. We are envisaging a model which would ensure the affordability for those parents who don't have enough money uh, to participate in the kindergarten costs uh, in order to uh, help them. Why are we doing this? Because all the uh, relevant global research uh, shows that it is important for children to attend kindergarten and to uh, participate in the uh, preschool uh, education because their results in education overall end up being far better, not only in this transition to the first grade of primary school, but uh, over the entire uh, ed uh, education. And this is why uh, we have uh, decided uh, for this kind of support uh, from the uh, in the funds from the Ministry of fin Finance. We already have launched a public call and uh, made the assessment of over 330 uh, applications for uh, a, a number of pro projects in uh, worth 1 billion point three four billion kuna. Uh, our goal is uh, uh, you have said that uh, over 20% of uh, children in Croatia don't have a place in kindergartens in Croatia. Our goal is to achieve the Barcelona objectives, but also the new EU objective, which is 96%. So our target is nine, for 96% of uh, preschool children to have a place in a kindergarten. We also have taken into consideration the demographic uh, projections, which say that uh, by 2030, we will have uh, less than 32,000 children per generation. Overall, we have created a good model. Uh, and I think this the, it's a it's a good project. The next step in the educational sector is the transition to the primary education, where our children have uh, 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 by far uh, the lowest number of uh, school hours in Europe. Uh, and the problem is our work in shifts. Uh, Seventy percent of schools. Uh, work uh, in in shifts, uh, but uh, resulting in 60% of uh, pupils in, in uh, going to school in shifts. So this is why we are focused on addressing that problem. Over 2.8 billion kuna, so somewhat over 300 million euro, is uh, foreseen for the public call, which will uh, try to address the problem of uh, uh, switching from uh, uh, school shift, uh, shifts. Uh, and we're talking to our colleagues from the commission, and we're uh, laying the foundations for uh, root changes in education through the reform initiatives. We will be piloting a new model starting from the next school year over the period of four years with an entirely new concept 
uh, and schedule for uh, some uh, areas. I will not talk about the uh, uh, specifics in detail. We will have more uh, hours of mathematics and some other subjects. So we would uh, uh, like to uh, harmonize the creation system with the European one. And uh, in the long term, our children will be more competent uh, when entering the labor market. Uh, they will be more ready uh, coming into the labor market. And uh, related to that, the third reform is in the secondary education investment in increasing uh, the scope of the, the uh, high school programs. We have some 30 percent of um, as, uh, students in the so-called gymnasium products uh, programs while the EU average is 52 percent. Our goal is to increase this to an even higher percentage, which will contribute uh, to the uh, um, uh, their ability to go further to the uh, higher education. Uh, also, in terms of vocational programs, we would like to modernize, uh, upgrade the vocational programs and uh, connect them to the needs of the labor market. Uh, our problem today is that 70 percent of the vocational school students, uh, uh, 82 percent of them pass the state national state exam. 68% uh, pass and 62% uh, enter the uh, uh, higher education. So the question is, why do we have students in vocational schools w uh, when they uh, uh, end up at, in uh, higher education? Uh, our fourth reform is related to higher education. We focused on increasing digital capacities in the context of the COVID uh, pandemic. Our tertiary system was uh, far more resilient in terms of these challenges because over the past five years we invested almost 500 million euros and uh, which uh, uh, enabled us to go through the this crisis in an easier way through the uh, online schoolings uh, and parallelly we are going through uh, reforms creating a new uh, programming uh, contract uh, reforms we have allocated additional funds uh, and also what still hasn't been said here we're also uh, uh, taking account into account research with 600 million kuna invested in research projects in order to create uh, opportunities for uh, innovations and the higher quality of research, both for social uh, sciences and natural sciences. Yes, I, I believe that you are happy with the uh, results so far and that the target groups are already see some benefits uh, and the, uh, the rest of the benefits are, uh, uh, are still to be seen. Uh, you were a, a dean of the uh, of a university in Osiek, uh, a university which schools students who are employable. Uh, according to your experience, what should we focus on in education and research for a better future? What do your students expect from the uh, uh, their uh, conditions, studying conditions? Uh, to enable them to uh, achieve their academic uh, titles, to have a higher education uh, uh, titles and prevent them from uh, leaving Croatia. Thank you for this question. Our students are employable. They find jobs immediately after graduating. Their employers uh, contact them during the uh, uh, their studies. Uh, internships are a part of our study programs in uh, uh, undergraduate uh, and graduate uh, uh, studies. We have a strong economic sector in our environment, which enables our uh, students to uh, have their internships. As you've heard, heard uh, this is a fast growing sector in our city. And we have done some research over the past year to turn this growth into numbers. Uh, it's a growth of some 20 percent, annual growth of 20 percent in the number of employees. 
uh, and uh, good projections uh, of uh, in the growth of revenues, and we will uh, try to meet uh, uh, these needs over the next period. What is important to keep uh, young people in Croatia, it is the quality of life, which also entails quality jobs where uh, they can develop their cre creativity and earn for a decent living. Uh, this has happened in Osijek, and I believe that the growth of this sector uh, has largely prevented uh, people from leaving from the, the town and from Slavonia as a whole. What are the specific ways to improve uh, the studying? <clears throat> As far as our profession is concerned, the technology devel is developing very fast. Jobs are created and professions are created uh, almost annually. So uh, a part of our students uh, that we are educating today will be working in jobs that do not yet exist. So we need to enable them to access new technologies uh, to provide them with the, uh, the most up-to-date knowledge and skills but also to give them the, the fu uh, fundamental engineering skills to enable them to, uh, to be resilient uh, to these changes. And this is one of the intentions of the resilience and recovery plan to be resilient to uh, such situations. So with additional investments in the uh, uh, research infrastructure, which uh, uh, the Ministry of Science is um, taking into consideration very much, we can turn uh, to uh, uh, the, the latest equipment to enable our students to uh, gain all this knowledge. Yes, Mr. Mamic uh, has mentioned this, that they are uh, focusing on infrastructure and the uh, most up-to-date equipment, which is very important for young people to be ready for the uh, labor market. Mr. Mamic said that the preschool, uh, uh, preschooling education is very important and that research shows that these uh, children are more successful later on. Uh, the town of Elika Gorica is very aware of that. Uh, they're building, they have built new, uh, two new uh, kindergartens owing to 27.3 uh, uh, million kuna of grants. How, um, how many, how, what is the financing that you have absorbed so far from the EU funds? Hello, everyone. You, you're you right, uh, but uh, most things uh, uh, have been already said by my, uh, by my colleagues in terms of the European uh, financing. And uh, uh, this has just been, this was just a dream uh, a few decades ago in terms of preschooling education. Uh, the uh, uh, villages around Velika Gorica, which are not in the center of ta uh, town today, in a, a very small uh, local self-government unions have a, a zero rate of um, delinquent behavior, a uh, high rate of um, highly educated uh, individuals, uh, something that on the level of our city and, and uh, Croatia we're talking about. In Croatia, you mentioned the 27.3 million kuna that we will receive from the NRRP. This is specifically 400 new places for kindergarten, for kindergarten children. Uh, 400 new places. Uh, only two years ago, we opened uh, four uh, new kindergartens, and this we are one of the best uh, towns in that respect. We are either first or the second, investing the most in education as such. But if we hadn't had a plan uh, like this one, we would have uh, uh, needed to, to take loans, to wait for the budget funds, and it would take a, a, a number of years, and it is questionable whether we would be able to achieve it. I'm saying all this from the perspective of one of the uh, uh, richer towns in Croatia, so you can imagine uh, how much more difficult it is in uh, local self-government units which are uh, less rich with smaller budgets and where, where uh, uh, demography is a problem. Yeah, families come to Velika Gorica and uh, the latest statistics shows that we are the first in Croatia uh, in the number of uh, arrivals of young families and when young families choose Velika Gorica and not Zagreb uh, the prices of uh, uh, 
the real estate are a factor, but also whether you will find a place in the kindergarten, in the primary school, and uh, all of us who are parents, you, you know what we are talking about. Uh, when you, if we talk about the numbers in terms of EU funds, um, uh, I think we are in the best ever position for a head of a local uh, self-government unit uh, to uh, be able to uh, apply your skills in uh, preparing project proposals. Uh, at this moment, only we have over 100 million kuna of European funds invested in uh, Velika Gorica, energy renovations, uh, pedestrian uh, uh, routes, cycling routes, uh, entre entrepreneurship incubators, uh, etc. So uh, for these young people who need to stay in Croatia, uh, and as my colleague from the U university mentioned, we are talking about the context in which the uh, uh, an incubator like that can offer a perspective for the young people uh, in addition to the excellence uh, center, which is also being built from the EU funds in Velika Gorica. It will offer them a, pr uh, a perspective which they cannot have in some other uh, European uh, member states. And now uh, 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 in their home, they can uh, take care of their uh, of the things that are the most important for young fam families. Uh, European Commission said that 2023 is going to be the European year of skills. So what skills are important for the future and actually demand further development? Okay. Yes, I, I think I start with two figures. The first one is today 4 billion people are using the internet, which basically means half of the global population is on the internet. The second uh, figure is um, that the amount of data is doubling every two years. So basically what I want to say is that the digital revolution is gaining such a speed or so that it's difficult to keep up with this change. And what is very clear is that in the future, all parts of society, all parts of the economy, all parts of government will be digitalized. And this obviously means that I think one crucial skill is to have a digital skilled workforce or population. So I think this is number one, to, to be uh, able to, to cope with um, digital um, uh, applications. And the other one, and this I think is probably not so straightforward, but I think it's also important are what I would call soft skills. Because again, um, if things are changing so quickly, it is very unlikely that, you know, like when you enter the labor market at the age of 20, you go into a company and you stay there until you retire. I mean, you will change jobs many, many times. And this basically means you need to be resilient, you need to be creative, you need to be innovative. So basically these kind of things, uh, which, uh, which are, I think, crucial uh, um, to adjust and to adapt to changing circumstances. And, and where clearly, I think, also more um, can be done uh, from schools because I'm not and, and, and not always sure that you know like um, the way how our curricula are basically constructed always let's say foster um, these kind of soft skills um, uh, and and there's probably still a bit of work to be done on that front as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mamic, in relation with this. Uh, we mentioned that 2023 will be the year of skills. You talked about infrastructure, equipment, uh, higher education, but also vocational education in Croatia, because we have a shortage of, of these professions. What does our educational system really need in order to develop in the right direction? And how can we benefit from uh, this plan? What we need is we definitely need reforms and for decades, uh, we have had a number of ideas and uh, intentions to implement reforms, uh, but unlike that time where we didn't have uh, uh, funds for that, and as uh, uh, Prime Minister Pl Plenkovic said today, uh, we have almost 1 billion euro uh, uh, only from the NRRP, in addition to the regular uh, annual funds from the multi-annual uh, financial framework, the um, competitiveness and cohesion and the European Social Fund. So this will uh, give us the strength 
to uh, change that together with our stakeholders, our teachers. Uh, the emphasis uh, before uh, uh, that I placed before was on preschooling, but everything starts from primary education. In our primary schools, we need to create preconditions for uh, single shift work in order to change uh, the the total number of uh, hours spent in school. Uh, not only will our children have better education and, and achieve better results, well, we need to create equal opportunities for all. In uh, every part of Croatia, children uh, need to have uh, the same opportunities because everywhere we have a, a, a similar number of talents. We need to support the most vulnerable groups from um, uh, social groups, disadvantaged social groups. Uh, we need to reduce the the uh, need for um, for tutoring after school because not all parents have enough money to pay for tutoring uh, outside the school. And as the prime minister mentioned, the children should have lunch in the school, uh, additional extracurricular activities. Um, for those children who want to uh, uh, attend activities in the areas of art, languages, art. So regardless of the fact whether their parents can pay for that, they will receive uh, funds from the central government and <clears throat> the uh, uh, school heads will organize these activities. So on the one hand, we're influencing the results achieved by our children uh, later on. Our goal is in accordance with our st uh, national strategy. Uh, uh, our goal is for these results in PISA and other assessments to be uh, much better. And on the other hand, through optim optimizing uh, the efficiency of our educational system, which is imbalanced in some ways, we want to create preconditions for those who are holders of these uh, system and these are our uh, teachers uh, for them to obtain a, a better position in the uh, uh, society and value their status through increasing their salaries uh, on the one hand and on the other through a new model of uh, training um, uh, to create um, preconditions for these uh, shortage professions, uh, shortage teacher professions, because our students don't want to enroll in um, uh, university programs for uh, teaching mathematics, physics, etc. Uh, uh, we, we have, uh, this will resolve a problem to a certain extent, but uh, we need to work on making this uh, profession desirable uh, in the long term because uh, uh, the students want to know their per perspectives throughout the, uh, uh, the their working life. So we try to balance that to improve the system to uh, uh, provide benefits for the students because we're doing this for them, for their families, for their parents uh, who are highly employable. Uh, the children will be will spend quality time in school, will have a lunch in school and other activities. This is something that we're doing in the long term. So these uh, funds, I've been in the, at the Ministry for, uh, of, of Science for 15 uh, years, and these are revolutionary funds. We have never had so much money to, uh, to, uh, to do big things. This is a generational opportunity to uh, take a big step in educational uh, reforms. They will, we will of, of course, have some disagreements with the stakeholders because changes are not always 100% positives. There are there will be some steps that will not be as popular, but uh, uh, I believe that reason will prevail and we will see uh, uh, that this is important and what it means for our children in the future. When we talk about the secondary uh, school system, uh, one of the essential things is the vocational education and the way uh, we program it. Uh, we're working on reforms related to the core curricula. Uh, the idea is to uh, m modernize them. We have invested a number of uh, fun, uh, funds in competency centers. The idea is to educate our children for a new uh, uh, contemporary professions and to have skills to be productive in the labor market.
Thank you very much for this very extensive response, but I think we've all gained a picture of everything you're doing and what's ahead of young people and uh, children who are either already in the educational system or are yet to enter it. We keep talking about larger and smaller communities, and Mr. Uh, Achkar has mentioned that increasing number of young families is moving to Velika Gorica, and uh, Mr. Uh, Matic has also mentioned uh, the positive things happening at his faculty. So things are uh, happening that are not necessarily a bad thing. OSIC has already announced several plans related to the plan. What specifically is the plan of your institution and has it actually applied uh, uh, for uh, projects uh, uh, from the NRP? And what are you doing in that respect? Well, the city of Osijek has become a big construction site, uh, which can be seen by our citizens, but a lot of it is also visible in the media. Some uh, projects, specifically from NRRP, uh, have already been signed, uh, created by the city and the county. Some of it uh, has already been implemented. Quite a bit is being done and quite a bit is uh, being announced. As for our institution, in terms of strategic projects that we are currently implementing, I can mention the creation uh, of the project technical documentation and obtaining of the uh, construction permit for the future building of the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science, which is uh, being financed from the part provided for research projects. We are currently in the final stage and expecting the construction permit to be valid very soon to complete this phase of the project. And in the very near future, one of the priorities will also be to provide funding for the construction, for which we hope uh, there will be some funding also from the NRRP. Of course, we are going to do our best to corroborate uh, this with good arguments. The construction itself is not as so important if we don't have the right people. What is also important uh, and also planned uh, to be funded from the NRRP is to develop the careers of young researchers who are currently our biggest source of future teachers and professors. After successfully uh, implemented projects, conclusion of uh, postgraduate studies, the biggest uh, base of uh, future employees are precisely those people. And we think that here we have a great deal of potential, regardless of the fact that uh, we can still see a significant uh, imbalance uh, between the salaries in the private and the educational sector, at least in the IT sector. It is to be expected, but we cannot expect to eliminate it so soon. So these are some of the priorities that we are working on. Of course, we are going to also participate in the e-university project as one of the target institutions. and. Another important thing is the voucher scheme to finance the requalification of adults, which is also going to be a mechanism used to make up for the lack of experts in the labor market. It is going to make it possible for numerous older people to requalify and find employment in this sector. And more or less, that's it. But I would also like to highlight that uh, the increase in both human and spatial capacities are in line with the National uh, Strategy Digital Croatia 2022, which the Prime Minister also mentioned this morning. And we think that this strategy is very well harmonized and aligned with the National Recovery and Resilience Plan and that it's going to provide us with a framework for the future objectives that we will have to achieve in order to realize our vision and mission. Thank you for sharing this with us. I wish you a lot of uh, success and luck uh, in your future work. I keep repeating that, but I truly do think it and believe we need it. It is uh, very good to uh, see how you complement each other in your responses. So there really is a synergy between all of the stakeholders. Since we are nearing the end of our panel, I would just like to ask one more question for Mr. Achkar and then a question for all of you. Since Velika Gorica is growing and developing very quickly, do you have and you and your team a vision of Velika Gorica as a city of the future. And what else are you planning to do to make it happen? If you do, do you have any advice, at least for cities with a similar population? What direction should you go in to achieve all of this? Well, 
we have set for ourselves, since we have to be uh, honest, that the geostrategic position of uh, uh, Velika Gorica is perfect. The main airport in Croatia is in Velika Gorica. It's very close to uh, the capital. Uh, you have absolutely all of the natural resources that anyone could just wish for. This makes us at the very start uh, incompetent for some cities. Uh, this is not, not something we can influence. But when you ask me about uh, what we see, uh, where we see it in the future, well, we've seen that it is precisely the smaller towns uh, all over the world, or rather in the European Union, uh, are the ones that thrive. So we could compare the size of our city to, let's say, a 60,000 um, people inhabitants um, city in, in Europe. But uh, those cities have proven to be the best for uh, people's lives. We have focused on preschool, on education, and on young people. And of course, which does not mean we are not going to compete for a retirement uh, center or for a senior uh, center, but we need to uh, follow the trends and uh, see what is happening here in our city. It was interesting how the colleague from OSIC mentioned that we need to be ready even for the professions and occupations that are, do not yet exist. So you have to also keep up with the labor market, uh, which is very important, especially the infrastructure has made it possible for us uh, to feel like uh, you have uh, 1,000 jobs opened in the logistics center and uh, factory with ID industry with 3D or 4D printers where you think you're going to need physical labor, but what you do need actually is your lifelong learning. And the excellent center we are working on right now is going to be the best possible response for older people who perhaps have not been educated enough to try to give them a position in that sector as well, because we are increasingly looking for engineers, uh, 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 and uh, people of similar professions. In that context, we just need a lot of uh, perseverance, uh, effort, and enthusiasm, strong uh, collaborators, good cooperation with the Croatian government, where uh, it has never been easier than today to be successful leader of uh, local self-government units with all of the possibilities provided by the European Union, by the Croatian government, and uh, whoever uh, looks at the local self-government units and does not uh, is not able to do what they want in those uh, units, the problem is in themselves because we uh, have never had more opportunities to use funding to help our uh, units. Well, we've said it all. It's lovely to hear from representative of uh, the city of Velika Gorica and the an MP and also the state secretary that we've never had more money than today. So you do have a huge responsibility to make sure that the money is properly used and leave your uh, trace and mark in history for the benefit of the young generation or next generation's EU. Uh, so the question for everybody, actually, how to stop the brain drain? What is what is your opinion? Opinion on that, Mr. Von Breska? <laughs> well, this, this uh, probably requires a different uh, panel or so. Um, but, <laughs> but, but, but at the end of the day, I mean, there are a number of things which are, I mean, which are the basic preconditions to keep people here. Education is number one. Jobs, quality of life is obviously number two and three. I think, um, I mean, Croatia is, is such a fantastic country or so. It's a pity if this trend would not be reversed in the future. And I think it's now up to us and not only to the commission, certainly not, uh, probably not even up to the, only to the government because everybody needs to participate in this endeavor. So, I mean, the cities, the universities, the teachers and so on, to bring, you know, like all the changes which are required. Um, there's not much time because um, the, the plan will end in 2026 and by then all the projects need to be completed because otherwise Croatia is not going to get all the money to which it is entitled to. So I no think... No pressure. No, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure at all. Uh, but, but I think we are on a good way, but, but as I said, it requires all of us to make it make it happen uh, fantastic on uh, resume fantastic summary uh, gentlemen I believe you agree with uh, most of it if not with every word from your experience and from your specific position how can we halt the brain drain well I think this is uh, 
was said very well, it is up to us to create preconditions for our citizens to have all of the public services that they need. Uh, I've also talked about the range of prices as to what it looks like in some more developed European democracies and what it looks like in Croatia. On the other hand, people live uh, on their livelihood. So the key is uh, what the wage policy will be, what will happen in uh, the labor market and in the economy. And what we see over the last few years is major and serious steps. Unfortunately, we were uh, disrupted in doing so a little bit by the pandemic and the aggression in Ukraine. But I will just say something from the point of view of the educational system. Our employees over the last five years, even though they always think this is not enough, but the, their wages have increased by over 30 or, 30 or close to 40 percent. So these are serious steps. It seems that the inflationary pressures that took place uh, lately have uh, uh, halted this a little bit. But regardless, I think this is a good direction. If we continue along those lines and reach a certain more adequate levels, both through increasing efficacy uh, and efficiency, additional investments, economy growth, and so on, I think that many people will be satisfied that many will return to Croatia. This is a trend that uh, we have been noticing based on the number of children in schools. So we have definitely slowed down the immigration and we have increasingly examples of people coming back from Germany, Ireland and some other countries and let them come back. And perhaps we'll also have foreigners now because we've become famous after the World Cup. People are Googling on where Croatia is. Now suddenly we'll have a brain increase. Mr. Matic, your perspective. Well, I would just maybe reiterate what I have already said. Uh, jobs are important. Jobs that people will be satisfied with, well, they will be able to realize their potentials and that will give them a good livelihood. I think everything is moving in that direction and this is being intensively worked on. All of us are working on our own micro levels. We have to be consistent. I would also like to refer to the previous panel, what is very important related to the economic sector or business sector that we intensely cooperate with because uh, we think it is very important and decisive actually for our line of work. And that is the financing of innovative products in companies because regardless of the size or mm, economic activities, the of the, the IT sector in OSIEC, we have to be honest that uh, these are still mostly companies which have a business model focused on service provision. And I think that once uh, new products are developed and once the companies mostly sell products, that we will see an increase in the revenue per employee and that this will allow for an additional impetus to the sector. Thank you very much, Mr. Achkar. Well, I think the topic of this um, panel, the content and the arguments provided, uh, favor the fact that this is the best possible response to halt the brain drain. And uh, it should also be mentioned, as Mr. Mamic has just said, that the average wage and the quality of life and everything else we've heard are uh, very important and considerably different than they were a few years ago and with the intention to continue. I think this will uh, enable us to perhaps halt uh, this trend. We're not going to be able to stop it completely because no countries have managed to do that, but we are making steps in that direction, and I think we should just continue along those lines. Thank you, Mr. Mamic. You wanted to say something. I wanted to follow up on what the dean has said. So the very fact that Croatia is uh, in the semifinals, two World Cups in a row, this is not the only thing we're successful in. I don't know if people are familiar with that Croatia also has two unicorns and about to have the third one. In, in that regard, in the European and global um, uh, context, we are above average. We have very many things to be proud of. And I think this panel has only scratched the surface. And Mr. von Breska has said, any question could open up a separate panel uh, to be discussed on of even more than 45 minutes. So thank you very much for the time taken out for this panel. And once again, to repeat myself, I wish you a lot of success and uh, luck uh, and fortune in your future work for the benefit of all of us as a society. Thank you once again. The audience will thank you with an applause. Thank you very much. And we really are now nearing the end 
of this first conference ready for tomorrow, which we are, as we were able to see from our stakeholders. But we also need some conclusions from this first conference, as it usually happens. So we are going to welcome with an applause our final concluding speaker, who is special advisor to the prime minister for economic issues, Mr. Zvonimir Savic. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. At the very end, we are not going to let you go until I finish with my presentation. It's going to be more of a summary of some things that have been said so far with a few new elements and something uh, motivating and mobilizing for all of us. It was agreed for me to provide an overview of the future steps, but we cannot talk about future steps until we see what we've done so far and where we want to go with regard to the NRRP. We've already mentioned several times that Croatia has at its disposal 5.5 billion euro from the uh, RRF. We had a little bit more until we agreed that we are growing too fast and that the amount was reduced. And now they've taken off the earphones uh, not to hear that they've reduced the amount. I'm joking. But from those 5.5 billion euro, this is about 10% of our GDP. We are along the lines at the level of Greece and the rest of the EU has a lot less, which for all of us, not just the government, but also other institutions, is an obligation to make use of this funding. We decided to to take the road of strategic approach. So for the NRP to be coordinated on the level of the prime minister's office and the ministry of finance. So a team at the uh, prime minister's office and the ministry of finance and its team in coordination with all other ministries because to even embark on the utilization of this 5.5 billion euro, which we had at our disposal at certain time, we need to know where we're going. So what you see is by EU member states, the allocation of our 5.5 billion euro compared to the size of our economy. This uh, diagram from uh, EU facility is something you will not see for the next hundred years. We are very aware of this and we know that this is the unique opportunity to implement reforms and investments. If anybody showed you a similar uh, diagram for cohesion policy or RFO, it would be similar. Um, Croatia would be at a similar position. So we've taken this very seriously. But to do this, we need to know where you're going. Because if we don't know where we're going, every road will take us to nowhere. Of course, we did not opt for the road to nowhere, where there's an obstacle at the end of the road, but rather for a road which takes us into the future development and growth. In order to be able to do this, we need to know what we're going to focus on with our 5.5 billion euro. And we decided to take a strategic approach. So only those reforms and those investments which are in the government's program, in the national reform uh, plan, in the special recommendations by the European Commission for the 29, uh, 2019 and 2022, uh, 22, 2020, I'm sorry, which we have all taken into account because they're all in our NRRP, the measures we had to implement in the implementation of the ERM to access the Eurozone. And as the Prime Minister has said at the beginning, the National Development Strategy by 2030, where we wrote down our national priorities. Only those reforms and those investments that you can find in these documents are the ones that are in our NRRP. And that is the strategic approach. When we generated the document and wrote it, uh, the result is uh, seen on the next slide. Here you can see horizontally, uh, top to the bottom, uh, stages in the approval of the plan, fulfillment of reforms, uh, requests for the first uh, installment, second installment, and in the vertical columns you see the states. The point is not to compare ourselves to other member states, but rather the point is to see where we are. 
Up until a few years ago, whatever indicator you wanted to look at, administrative or economic, we always said that uh, Croatia is somewhere towards the bottom. But the story is reversed. Now, look at this column now where Croatia is in the middle. We were country number 16, which has written its NRRP as a document and submitted it to the Commission. After that, the plan was approved. And after that, this bursment of free finance, if we're still at 15 or 16th position, but as time went by, and the completion of investments, so we went to uh, the seventh position and even sixth uh, in the fulfillment of the requirements for the first installment. After that, by the end of by mid this year, we fulfilled the criteria for all of the reforms and all investments and submitted the application for the second installment. And we were number three in the European Union in that regard. And in a few days, as you've heard from our colleagues from the European Commission, we expect these funds to be disbursed. So we are still going to be third and below this number and below that level, we will not go and two slate slides later on. You will see why this is so. As for the funds, you see here the dynamic of disbursement, but based on the fulfillment of all law reforms and investments. The first column is pre-financing, September last year, 818 million euros. Second column, 700 euro first installment of the NRRP. Third column is what we are expecting in a few days. When you add it all up, you reach the already mentioned 40% of the funds of the total NRRP. These three figures are individually the largest ever dispersed amount into the into creation budget from the EU budget, starting from pre-financing uh, uh, and continuing to the other uh, two. Uh, if you look at the dynamics, it all, of course depends on the fulfillment of our re reforms and investments. Uh, a lot of people from uh, many sectors are here and they know that we uh, don't send any requests for disbursements until all the uh, reforms and rec uh, ref um, and investments have been implemented. If we do some more comparisons what this is something that doesn't come from me but deloitte uh, they published an analysis a few days ago a comparative analysis uh, i will go through these slides more slowly i see that you're taking pictures this slide is a motivation for everyone in croatia to keep the up with the dyna the, the the present dynamics look at the data they analyzed all uh, the member states um, in the EU implementing the, the their NRRPs. On your left side, you will see three countries with the highest indicators comparing uh, the absorbed funds from the uh, um, RRF uh, compared, compared to their GDPs. Uh, look at the part on the left. Croatia is ranked second. Uh, in terms of uh, funding absorbed so far, uh, including what we will receive on Friday, compared to our GDP, we are second. Look at this part, the, this image in the middle, which tells you uh, how many funds have already been absorbed, the 2.2 uh, billion euros compared to the, uh, the entire allocation, so 5.5 billion. Croatia is uh, also ranked among the th among three countries here. Uh, I would like to contradict Deloitte. I think it's 40 percent and not 36. We would be ranked second, but it doesn't matter. We are second or third. On the right side, um, you see the relative speed of absorption. So how fast do we? Uh, implement reforms. We uh, always talk about reforms in Croatia, how fast we're implementing them, etc. You see that we are ranked second here. So you look if you look at all three charts, Croatia is either second or third, just like our uh, national football team. In 98, they were third, uh, four years ago, second. So if everything goes well uh, in the finals, if they if they uh, come first, this will be our goal to to uh, uh, keep up with our success in sport. Uh, 
so if I uh, uh, talked about this uh, in a week's time on Monday, the story would be different. So I wish every success to our boys uh, in the finals. Um, another slide which talks about what we have done so far and what we still need to do. These red columns are the number of reforms which we are obliged to implement uh, every half year. Uh, so the reforms that we uh, uh, that the government and the ministries have committed themselves to. The three uh, red columns uh, say that there have been 33 reforms in the first request, 21 for the second tranche, and this last year, 32. So uh, we will have the largest number of reforms now. The blue columns uh, the blue bars are uh, investment plans within the NRRP. So these are 145 reforms, 227 investments implemented by our uh, sectors, the development back by Hamak Bikra. All of you are here, you're all contributing to implementing our indicate to fulfilling our indicators within the set deadlines. Uh, 34 indicators have been fulfilled. Uh, for 700 million euros, 25 for another 700, and we're fulfilling the remaining for uh, 45 until the end of the year. 45 out of uh, 54 out of 54 reforms have been uh, uh, implemented so far. If you look at the third uh, uh, red bar, and this will be uh, completed by the end of the year. Uh, this is added up to 86. Those of you who have been worked at uh, this uh, with the civil service for a long time, I don't know if you can remember a time where uh, when all of the reforms uh, were uh, implemented. So this is 100 percent percent cumulatively. This is 60 percent of all reforms in the NRRP, and you uh, in the in the different institutions and sectors are contributing to these. So these are reforms and investments. What are we focusing on, and whether our administration and our system is fast enough to absorb that? Uh, we and Greece are the country with the most funds compared to their GDP. Can we consume all that uh, in the short period? Yes, we can. Look at this slide. Uh, the first column answers the question about the value of our NRRP as a document. It is worth 6.3 billion uh, euros because we thought we would have 6.3 uh, billion. Uh, the second uh, bar is the plan for uh, investments launched in 2022. The third bar is how many calls have been uh, completed uh, that are financed from the NRRP. Uh, we have underway 33%, and by the end of the year, another 10%. When you add up the last three columns, uh, you will have 43% of already launched uh, calls since December last year. And until by the end of this year, uh, we will reach 53%. 53% of investments from the NRP, the document, the document itself, which is larger than the allocation. If we only look at the allocation, we will uh, achieve 60% in uh, only uh, over only one year. So this proves that our institutions and our uh, uh, businesses and that we as a society can uh, uh, take this burden uh, to the benefit of our society and our economy. Uh, let me talk about some of the significant investments that are being planned uh, by the end of uh, this year, uh, some 5 billion kuna. Uh, as an example, uh, from several sectors, economy, education, science and research, labor market and social protection. Uh, representatives from these sectors are sitting here and they're nodding their heads uh, and confirming that we will uh, uh, indeed implement these investments. Uh, modernization of uh, uh, railways, electrification for uh, 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 
receipt of uh, uh, airplanes in the uh, airport of Zadar, e-university, uh, building uh, centers for the elderly. Uh, this is what is starting uh, then in the uh, health sector, which is sticking to deadlines in terms of uh, reforms and investments, digitalization and integration of uh, uh, operation halls, uh, at the Sestre uh, Milosrdnice uh, Hospital, centralized financing in order to keep uh, 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 our quality personnel. If you ask me what happens next year, uh, this is a description of reforms that are planned uh, to which we are committed in the first half of 2023. Uh, improvement of the wage setting mechanism in the uh, civil service and public uh, in the public sector, but with the uh, the help of the NRRP, uh, we will stick to deadlines here, and we will have a new act on on wage setting in the state administration. We have a number of acts uh, in the justice uh, department. Uh, we have a structural reform of the educational system in terms of financing the uh, uh, preschooling education. Uh, this is related to kindergartens, as you have heard. Uh, uh, before and what is important for all of us um, increasing uh, the adequacy of pensions and uh, uh, entry into force of the act on the pension insurance so this is uh, these are the reforms that we will propose next uh, year and we will prepare uh, an application for the next tranche and we will continue in this way uh, until we have absorbed all the funds and we will hope that the implementation of our NRRP will contribute to the economic growth of our country. Uh, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund have calculated that if we implement this plan in 2022 and 23 in the dynamics with the dynamics that ha which has been planned, uh, then the existing economic growth, uh, the uh, implementation of the NRRP would contribute with another 1.4 uh, percentage points in 22 and 1.6 1.4 in uh, 23. And this is one of the mechanisms that is contributed to the reduction of uh, risks uh, that we will be facing in 2023, which will be largely unstable. Thank you for your attention. I hope this was useful. It was very useful. It is a fantastic conclusion and a sum up of our gathering today. There were a lot of nods uh, in the audience, as you have noticed. Uh, it is a fantastic thing that so many of you are including in this, and they will we will be able to meet all the deadlines and absorb all the funds. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your attention. All, for all additional information related to the uh, NRRP, you can visit a dedicated uh, page of the government uh, uh, gov.hr, uh, all the information related to deadlines, procedures, and uh, uh, sectors and niches. Um, and you can also follow uh, the European Commission's uh, web pages. Uh, I would like to thank the Commission's representatives for participating in these uh, panels. Uh, please be calm tomorrow for the game. Uh, let us have a good day tomorrow and today, but regardless of the sport and our uh, boys in uh, Qatar, I wish you all the best uh, and have a good day and goodbye.